What is up crew, it's your boy KSM, and on today's video, we're going to be going over how to do dynamic perspective. We're going to talk about the easiest ways to be able to do low view, high view angle shots. And I have your three different references, which I'll cover some of the basics of perspective, as well as just some of the practices that I utilize whenever I'm drawing these type of shots. Now, if it's your first time here, welcome in. My name is KSM, and I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, uh, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested in some free art education or you want to hang out with my dog who is over there, make sure to leave a follow I'm out here on Twitch and like and subscribe if you're watching from YouTube. But with that being said, let's go right into today's stream. So let me go ahead and play some music for those of you watching live and stuff. I've um, got my usual Spotify playlist. Um, but yeah, thank you for everybody typing those high YouTubes, by the way, too. Um, yes, this is going to be a fun stream. We're going to be going over some dynamic shots and I'm going to be breaking down again some of the basics that I look at for for tackling these type of shots, because I think these are really fun shots. But surprisingly, these are actually common shots that you might have to do if you're working in an animation production. I've definitely done a few episodes where I've had to do plenty of high angle shots, um, high view shots, and even some low angle ones, too, where the character you're seeing, you're seeing the character from down below maybe they're on top of a cliff or a building or whatever have you and they're looking down at something right so i've definitely done a few of these and i think it's a good practice to be able to see it but also to be able to understand how it works so that way it's not as scary maybe for some of you who are who are here right now um so really quick let me go ahead and show you guys um let me guys let me show you guys really quick on the discord channel where to grab some of the worksheets and stuff for today uh, we've got here this one right here this is today's worksheet so make sure to grab this on the discord channel if you're watching live there's three different poses here super fun uh and then here i threw in a general for shortening tips and kind of just general perspective stuff from my digital book which hopefully i'll be releasing in may or june of this year it's just a compilation of notes and stuff that i've taken which will also have the worksheets that we covered out here on my 30-day boot camp so a super dense pdf book that you guys will be able to grab uh, and then here is a kind of a, con a, a a condensed version here of andrew loomis's notes on perspective as well so highly recommend you guys grab these these are free to grab um out there on my discord channel okay just make sure you make sure you snag them out here uh but yes welcome in everybody who's coming out here thank you again for all the all the follows all the all the, the high youtubes and all that stuff appreciate it guys um and yeah welcome in everyone who's coming in uh also shout out again to nvq if one of my mods if they're here can shout them out also bots welcome back in as well but okay, cool. Um, let's go ahead here. Start out now with the first one, which I actually want to be this one right here. This is going to be the only low view, low angle shot that we're going to be covering today. Um, but I think if we can knock this one out, we'll be able to utilize the same principles for the other, uh, the other two references. Okay. So one of the first things I always talk about whenever I'm trying to explain perspective to people um, is to always try to find the horizon line first. The horizon line, also known as the eye level, is going to be where the viewer's eyes are going to be at. Um, and this will determine what you're seeing either above or below this eye view or this horizon line. Now, in this case right here, I want to test you guys and I want to see where do you guys feel like the eye level is going to be at let's just type it out in the chat um, i'll give you guys some options right here all right is it going to be here in a is it going to be here in b is it going to be here in c uh we'll do d and for those of you wild ones in the chat is it going to be e and this is going to be roughly just a general placement right here so you guys can go just let me know in the chat we're not going to do a poll or anything like that um where do you feel like the eye level is? I mean, we could even put F. Why not? Some of you, Peter wants to put F. Uh, Romy, look at these people put an F in the chat. <laughs> I'm kidding. Some of you might actually put F, in all honesty. Um, okay. And again, um, again, this is not like, uh, it doesn't have to be exact, just kind of like a rough range. I just, I just randomly, um, I just randomly dropped these in here. So, yeah. So, the the answer uh, i think i think i think some of you are kind of uh, around this ballpark range um i would say that the answer for me personally um would definitely be somewhere between b or c i'd actually lean it more around here but here's the cool thing about drawing perspective and especially if you're drawing perspective for your own illustrations um for your own illustrations or let's say you're working in an animated scene or something 
The cool thing about doing perspective shots like this is that you can actually choose where you want the eye level to be. And usually what I like to do personally as an artist is I like to choose the, the main focal point of where I want to emphasize um, a particular part of the scene. So in this case right here, I really want to emphasize this foot zooming into the shot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it right here. I'm just going to say I want that horizon line to be roughly about here. Now, there are a few techniques, uh, tips and tricks that we can cover today that you can actually use to kind of also figure out where the where the line is going to be. Um, so, for example, right here, there are going to be some uh, some little strings that you can kind of use as a general guideline. Uh, right here, you can kind of see them in the background, right? You can maybe even use these uh, as a guideline as well. So you can use the buildings right here to kind of help you determine where that horizon line might be. And as you guys can see, I mean, these are all just rough lines that I'm placing down right here. But take a look at this. They're all going to be converging roughly about right here which is actually where we placed it. So it's not bad, right? So again, choose your focal points, choose where you want the uh, the area to be most uh, focused for the design of the character. But overall, even if, even if you don't do that, just looking at the reference image, you can find certain lines right here that you can actually line up to, to, to match this point right here. So pretty nifty technique here, um, but let's go ahead now and draw our own grid uh, using some of these techniques. And I'll be kind of cleaning this one up just a little bit more, okay? But let me know if that made any sense. Again, I'm trying to keep it nice and simple today. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with all the crazy tips and stuff. You know, I want to make it nice and nice and accessible. So whether or not you're coming in here for the first time or you're just kind of, you know, hanging out here, um, it won't be as crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of find that center line or actually let's kind of find here. I'm just establishing a basic grid here, right? And I'm going to move this grid. I'll bring it down to a little bit of a bigger view. But again, um, this is something you can start thinking about when you're, when you're laying these things out. Um, what are we talking about today? So today we're talking about dynamic perspective. Uh, for those of you coming in, don't worry, it's not late. If anything, you're actually here early because the stream, <laughs> the stream just started. So you're, you're actually chilling right now. Um, you are, you're in a, came in at a good time. Uh, I'm going to lay out here the ground plane as a different, uh, this is going to be the ground plane right here. Uh, the ground plane basically is just going to be where the, where the ground is, but again, it's going to vary depending on the shot, right? So this is going to be our perspective grid that we're kind of just laying out here. And you can see why this is considered a low angle or a dynamic perspective. Um, and a big reason why is again, because of the fact that um, if you take a look here, I'll, I'll go back here. Majority of the uh, the characters are actually going to be above the eye view or below the eye view. So it's actually um, going to create this cool dynamic effect here that you're going to be seeing like this character. They're going to they're gonna look like they're zoomed out and all that stuff, right? So cool kind of like little um, shot here that we can use. I'm just going to lay out a few more lines just to kind of get things going. And I think we'll be, I think we'll be good with this one. I'm just going to put some placeholders there for uh, feet and stuff. So I don't go too far out. Um, okay. But let's go ahead and make this one a little bit bigger. Now we have our grid here. Um, and let's talk a little bit about actually laying these characters out in perspective and all that stuff. Um, let me see here. Um, what that's with your eye point in the middle. What if it's the left or right? I'm not sure I understand. There's a, there's a question in the chat here. Let me know if you guys understand this one. Um, that's with your eye point in the middle. What if it's the left or right? What do you, uh, can you explain what you, uh, what you mean by that? Maybe or someone else understands. Are you referring to vanishing points perhaps? If you're referring to vanishing points, um, then I can talk a bit about that too. What if you're looking from the corner? Oh, you're saying like if you're looking this way? Or if you're saying like, if the perspective, the point of the horizon line vanishing point, yes, couldn't think of the right term. I see. So they're saying like, what if the perspective is here instead of in the center, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, let's say the point is supposed to be here instead of, instead of like right here. Ah, okay. So that is actually a great question. And I think a common misnomer that a lot of beginners misunderstand about perspective. So um, if you guys weren't here for my previous stream where I actually talked a little bit about drawing characters in perspective, um, at the end of that video, I actually talked about this idea here of rotating boxes in perspective and how um, generally speaking, everything will line up on the horizon line. So whether you are, uh, whether you're looking at something straight ahead or here, the horizon line is the determining factor of all the things that converge on your, whatever it is you're looking at. So for example, watch, I'll show you guys a quick little demo here. 
let's say we drew out here a box in perspective um or not a box we'll just we'll just make it simple let's just say we're drawing out here a square right now if you want to rotate this this square um in perspective look what's going to happen here um someone actually answered in the chat but basically your vanishing points will always just land on the horizon line what's most important is actually just going to be where you're placing that line because once you let's say for example rotate this the same exact box that we got right here right this one here i'm going to just say i want it to kind of go um maybe like this i want to rotate it a little bit this way right i'm actually here establishing where the perspective is going to be so it's going to be one right here right and then maybe maybe right here we'll have the other corner of this of the square right here right or maybe i'll have it go this way so all i'm really doing here is i'm just rotating the square but notice how the vanishing points still line up um they still line up there on the horizon line right and this is going to go somewhere right here in perspective a little bit further away uh, than what we have on the grid does that make sense? So basically everything is going to be, um, everything is going to still land on that horizon line, uh, for the most part. Um, and now there are going to be some cases where if you use three point perspective and kind of warp it out a little bit, that it'll still get a, it'll get a little bit more tricky, but the idea is still relatively the same. What you're seeing here, what the eye sees is going to be the general grid. And you don't have to worry about trying to line everything up with one point, two point, three point perspective, because all of these things generally will line up at some point somewhere along that horizon line. Um, let me know if that made any sense. It's a it's a it's a hard it's a hard uh, concept I think to understand at the beginning if you're first learning perspective. Um, but if you want a little bit more of an in depth example of that, I would actually recommend checking out last stream uh, day twenty two where I go kind of more in depth about some of the basics of perspective there and how to utilize that. But I always tell people what's more important than establishing the. Um, What's more, what's more important than establishing one point, two point perspective is actually going to be, again, understanding how the horizon line works. And I think that is more valuable in getting you kind of started as, as you start doing these kind of more complicated scenes and stuff. But yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I'm glad that you asked it and do let me know if that made sense or if that didn't make any sense. <laughs> um, the biggest misconception I had was that you can have a hundred vanishing points depending on how many boxes you rotate. Yeah, you can have, um, you can have um you can have as many as you want uh for sure how how do you calculate vanishing points if it's above the horizon line um again um it's it's again going to be kind of a similar concept except you're going to be utilizing some of the uh y axis but that's going to that's going to be a little bit more of a complicated thing i'm actually going to be showing you guys how to again become less reliant on using these particular grids and lines and for an example like this where it's going to be kind of hard to tell exactly where the grid's going to be i'll show you guys how to actually draw um some more kind of looser interpretations of perspective uh find ways to establish your own perspective without having to you know do all the crazy stuff there now what i'm going to do here uh, with this reference that we have is I'm actually going to go in now and let's start just kind of drawing out this character and we've already established some of the the main components here that we're working with now what I want to do uh, with you guys is I want to start off by just first establishing always the ground plane right always establish where your characters are um, in the scene and how they are interacting with the world uh, that they're in so in this case right here we have kind of this guy's foot kind of going in here and you know again i'm keeping it nice and loose i'm not actually trying to lock it in with the perspective i'm just using the perspective more as a general kind of guideline here to help us uh start placing in some of these components that hopefully will you know make some sense so i'm going to kind of shrink this one down just a little bit there kind of warp it out a bit um, but here is this guy's foot that we're going to have here um, i'm just going to kind of do that and i'm going to be just placing these characters in and using the rough kind of idea there, rough placement to, you know, get this scene going. So again, uh, after the horizon line, I would say, I would argue the, the next important thing here is going to be placing in the ground plane for this character. Okay. Um, also, thank you for the follows. Fall Lil and everybody who's coming in here today. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. My name is Kasem. I teach art on Twitch here and I also work full time in the animation industry. 
Um, so if you guys are interested in either animation or some free art education and stuff, uh, welcome in. Glad to have you guys on here today. Also, Maggie, hey, how's it going? Happy, happy Thursday. Welcome into the stream. But yeah, so again, I'm I'm mostly considering here. I'm I'm trying to make it so that you guys don't have to feel like you're super reliant on like, oh man, Kasem, I gotta place everything on this grid because the grid is, you know, the the key thing. There's all there's three point perspective. Like, nah, 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 nah. There's there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, things you can do. But here we're we're kind of establishing here kind of the shot here for this foot. And the, one of the things I want to remind you guys, and I'm actually have to uh, correct my own drawing here is. As you get closer and closer here to that horizon line, um, the top plane and the bottom plane that you're going to be seeing is actually going to flatten out a bit more. And that has to do with this thing called the degree of the ellipse. Uh, we talked about it in my last stream here. Um, and here's a demo of that where if we drew out this leg or these cylinders in perspective, the, the farther away something gets uh, vertically from the horizon line, the more you're going to be seeing of that top or bottom plane. And the closer it gets, the, um, the, the smaller or the thinner that degree is going to actually change. Okay. Um, a little bit of a weird topic and i feel like again perspective in general is just a very difficult topic um so if you guys are getting confused by this don't worry too much again i would just focus on primarily understanding the horizon line and then from these horizon lines really going in there and just getting comfortable with with that idea of using the horizon line uh, but now i'm going to go in i'm going to start placing out this uh just this character here that we have and you know i'm going to be drawing out just kind of some random cylindrical shapes and stuff just to kind of visualize the form um, overall. Um, super new to Twitch and you're officially the first creator I've subbed to. Thanks for making such a great making such great content. Ah, oh, thank you, Gurge. Appreciate that. Damn, that's crazy. The first sub, huh? Thank you so much. And I'm glad that I'm glad that you um I'm glad that you like my content. And for those of you guys who are here again, welcome in. Um, I've been on Twitch for about three years now. I love streaming out here and I love teaching. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, you into some free educational content, this is definitely that stream. Make sure you leave a follow out here. Um, but here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to kind of place in the cylinder and remember that, um, these shots are going to be kind of crazy. They're going to be a little bit dynamic. So we're going to be kind of warping out some of the shapes here just a little bit, but you know, don't feel like you have to match up the cylinders and the shapes exactly right here. So here, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to go in and place the ankle kind of below the horizon line, uh, that cylindrical shape there. And I'm actually going to actually, no, I'll, I'll give it a little bit of a bottom there because you're, you're going to be seeing it rotated a little bit at an angle. Um, and yeah, best of luck to you, Skulker. I was the first sub too. Really? Wow. That's crazy. That's super dope. And also destiny. Welcome back in. Um, but yeah, now let's go in here and let's actually don't forget to draw the other foot. So in this case, we can't really see the other foot, unfortunately, but I'm going to make some just kind of some general infer in inferences in inferences. So I'm going to, for example, use this perspective grid here just to kind of lay out um, the points here and say, OK, so this is going to be about the length of the foot. Um, so this foot, if we were to kind of bring it back all the way here, it would be roughly about this long. OK, now, again, these are just some cool tips and tricks you can use, um, but you can actually then now that I know it's going to be this long, I'm going to move it further back in this perspective. And I'm going to say, OK, uh, hold on. Let's see here. Go back here. How long did I say it was uh, doo -doo -doo, about this long? Um, OK, so now I'm going to do is I want to move it back here and I'm going to say, OK, cool. The foot now is going to be somewhere around here. And for this one, I'm actually going to line this one up in perspective. Let's just say it's going to be lined up here. And so this is just me again, using some of the measurements we have to be able to draw out some of the structures and forms um, that we have here. And also thank you for the follow Ura, Urizix. Okay. And actually, here's what I'll do. Cause I think, I think it might be easier for you guys as well to see me do it this way. Um, I'm going to actually, uh, I'll go in here and I will, whoops, um, I'll draw it next to the reference. So that way you guys can kind of see the, you know, the reference and how I'm kind of lining it up there. Cause I think that might actually, uh, make it easier for you guys to see it as well. So let's go in here. And now that we've kind of established here, the kind of the forms, let me go actually make this foot a little bit bigger. Um, we're going to go in and just kind of start placing out all of these general structures again. And here we're going to go kind of place that knee in. So I'll kind of work a little bit faster now. 
placing in that knee we place that bottom foot right here in that perspective shot we made the foot a little bit bigger so you're not really going to see that foot there um, but let's say we're going to kind of bring this one back here right and we're trying to imagine where we want that pelvis to be so the pelvis here again because we're seeing it from um above the horizon line we're going to actually see some of the the portions below it um oh that's super cool vandal yeah best of luck with your with your streams the stream deck is a super cool thing uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully this is again making some some sense. This is a, a pretty difficult practice in general. Um, but I'm not again, I'm trying to show you guys that you don't necessarily need to line up all your forms in the perspective. Um, as long as you have a good general idea of how you can start moving these boxes around in these horizontal planes and these perspectives and stuff. I think this will be uh, much more beneficial in the long run. But I know this is a tough topic, so <laughs> I'm trying to make it as easy as possible here by showing you guys just how I approach something like this and visualize some of the, the simplified forms. So remember that as you also kind of draw your forms out and they kind of move further away in perspective, um, some of these things are also going to be shrinking as well too. So kind of keep that in mind when you're locking these things out. Um, so right now I'm using a bit of intuition, but there's actually a few techniques that you can use as well. So for example, I talked about how we measured how far away that foot should be or how small that foot should be depending on how far it is. So let's say we made that foot this big, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to raise it up here, going up vertically. This is where that knee should be. And if the distance here is going to be this far, then we should probably bring this ankle down here like so, and then have that foot kind of be placed like right here. You get what I'm saying? So that... I, I wish there was like an easier way to say this, but like, again, that's just kind of like some of the ways that you can think about perspective is utilizing, um, us utilizing some of the measurements, utilizing some of the, uh, the points here that we have. And again, just approaching it with basic shapes, because sometimes, um, back when I was first starting out, I was super eager to jump into, uh, jump into doing all the crazy details, right? I was like, oh man, I want to do a crazy shot like this. Let me go draw that foot first and let me go ahead and draw all the details of the knee and the pants and all that. But part of the problem I find is if you start jumping in on the details right away, um, what ends up happening sometimes is you lose out on the structure of what, of what you're actually supposed to be drawing. And then you kind of just end up with this, this drawing that, you know, maybe looks like the details look right, but the, the structure and the perspective are completely off. You know what I'm talking about guys? Uh, really quick, by the way, I do run ads on my stream every hour and one's gonna be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. Um, but if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a prime sub. But either way, thank you for your support. And I hope to see you guys after, um, after the ad break there. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go in, um, Again, I drew out here this uh, portion here for the knee. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to keep it so that we're going to be seeing uh, this is more of a cylindrical form. So we're not really going to be seeing too much there um, of that cylinder. But, you know, you can kind of round it out and stuff. Now, as we kind of work our way up, we're already here establishing a bit of structure. Now, what I want to call out to is, again, um, when it comes to perspective and, and, and the forms and stuff, Remember that you can use general proportions to also help you start drawing out some of the anatomy that you might be missing here. So for example, uh, with this one, um, I've talked to you guys about how the proportion here of the torso is actually roughly about um, twice the length there of the pelvis. So you can kind of use that and say, okay, cool. Well, this is the pelvis that we drew, right? Let me go ahead now and put in two here, one, two, put in kind of that box and maybe have it kind of wrote, tilt a little bit this way because he's looking at us this way. And you can kind of see how that is going to give us a rough measurement, right? A little bit more of a rough measurement than it is going to be just trying to eyeball it out and stuff. If we didn't have the reference, if we didn't have this reference right here, I would still utilize that same approach, right? Where you're going in and you're saying, okay, cool. This is how big the pelvis is going to be. Let's go ahead now and double that up. So 
notice how I'm using these techniques pretty consistently actually across all of the drawings, right? So I'm lining up here. I'm saying, okay, well, if this, if this is the foot that I drew, that means that this is going to be where the ankle is going to be. And because we have it in perspective, I want it to kind of lengthen and go back this way. From there, let's figure out where the other foot placement is going to be. Place the leg there, right? So you can start using the things that you've already drawn to actually help give you an idea of where to place other things. And that sometimes will actually work out better than trying to like, for example, copy a reference exactly or copy a picture one-to-one uh, -one exactly. And hey, how's it going? Lucky Ducky and everybody else who's coming in here today. Uh, welcome in. Happy, um, happy Thursday. Uh, do you simplify shapes like this when you draw at work or do you jump right into it? It depends. Um, so sometimes if it's an, if it's like a, if the shot isn't super complicated, um, I'm not going to be using simple shapes. I'll just kind of jump in because the pose is already kind of, uh, not too complicated. So for example, like this girl, like I already know that like, okay, cool. I kind of have an idea for her already. So I like her, her pose is not super complicated, right? So I'm kind I can kind of go in here, uh, just draw out some of the basic details for her. Uh, and then this will kind of give me an idea already like, okay, nice. I can do this. I can kind of put, put her in here, you know, um, I'll give her arm like this and then her jacket's going to kind of, or her, her shirt's going to kind of infer some, some shape design there. So for stuff like that, like where she's just standing, it's a pretty like simple pose. Um, so I don't have to necessarily go in and kind of lock in all the general details or all the general simplified mannequin shapes. Um, but there are cases where I'll have like very complex, um, you know, complex stuff and I'll have to like really think about, uh, really think about what's going on there. But yeah, you can, you can imagine. So this is me kind of, I guess I'll speed run and just keep this reference, but, uh, keep this drawing, but you can imagine this is kind of what I'll do right for, uh, for stuff that's maybe not as complicated. And then all we got to do is we just move this one, um, like right here. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that made sense. Um, but again, a lot of that just comes down to, um, a lot of that just comes down to a bit of practice and getting used to the forms. Um, but I also want to show you guys how to get to someplace like that, right? Um, like how do you get to a place where you can just draw things out right away? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to, again, being able to visualize these like mannequin structures that we have here. And then from those mannequin structures, start adding in some of the more gestural approaches and, you know, curves and stuff out here. Um, but hey, thank you so much for the follow Lilo, Lilo Sichi and Ura Ziz. Welcome in guys. All right. Let me give a proper intro for myself. Cause I usually do these intros like after the ad break, but, um, if you guys are new to the stream, here we go in three, two, one. What is up, everybody? My name is Ksem, and I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, teaching everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Right now, I'm actually prepping to work as a designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you want to hang out with my dog who is sleeping over there, or you just like anime, animation, and all that stuff, uh, make sure to leave a follow out here on Twitch. And if you're watching from YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. But uh, with that being said, hopefully you guys do enjoy today's stream. It's a little bit of a doozy. All right. So we're covering here how to tackle these kind of crazy dynamic poses. Um, as you guys can tell, it's day, we're on day 23. I forget. I forgot what day we're on. Well, yeah, we're on day 23 of my boot camp. So we've already covered a lot of the fundamentals. And if you guys are interested in seeing some of the basic stuff that we covered in the earlier parts of my boot camp, those are actually up on YouTube. I think I have the first eight episodes or the first eight courses on YouTube already. Um, and I'll be uploading two, two days worth every week. So I'm, I upload two videos every week over there on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, if you guys like free educational content, um, do, you know, do leave a follow. And a lot of what I teach out here actually is stuff that I've either learned from reading books, um, or, um, stuff, stuff from reading books or even just taking online classes, uh, as well as taking physical classes. So I, I, back when I was still in art school, you know, so all, all of these things are just things that I've learned that I'm just sharing with you guys, as well as things that I utilize now that I work in the industry. Um, thank you for the follows. Wow. So many follows today. Appreciate the follows. Pukin, uh, Isabel, Lux Ray, uh, Gutin, 
Gaz wall. Dang, so many are you guys bots. Um, this is super helpful. I have the hardest time with dynamic poses. Yeah, I mean these are tough. <laughs> these are these are tough in general 100 percent. i mean i have a hard time with these um and this is why i love practicing these kind of things because um i think this is kind of the this is the kind of stuff that i feel i can really make it make a pose or make a make an illustration more interesting like even this girl right here who's standing right like we could have drawn this pose i'll show you guys really quick right we could have drawn her in a different perspective i'll show you real quick like if we had just drawn her from a regular perspective not really using much of a dynamic shot and just kind of going in here you know we could have drawn her like this and you know it would have been cool like it would have been all right but i think just from the fact that we were a, you know we we put her in a perspective grid and we we have her you know we have her doing kind of like that uh have her in this pose or in this shot it actually adds a lot to her character because it almost looks like you know she's she's looking down at us right so having something like this where it's just where we're just kind of looking straight ahead may not be as dynamic or as maybe interesting visually than if we did a shot now again obviously it depends right because if you're doing let's just say character design and you're not necessarily doing an illustration doing stuff like this where you're making it super warped and dynamic with the perspective might actually make it more difficult for other people who need to model your characters or use it because the proportions might be warped a little bit as well so you do have to keep that in mind like when to use dynamic poses and when to use uh, perspective and stuff because not every scene should call for um a a crazy dynamic pose like this um if if that makes any sense i don't know if that made any sense but um yeah welcome in everybody out here am i doing digital art yes um so i primarily use digital art for work um though i do tell people that um i do tell people that you know um, a lot of what i cover out here is not like specific to a digital art so it's not like a how to be a digital artist type of stream or like oh well, you got to use the multiply and you got to use these techniques it's not necessarily like that and more just like um here are some general drawing techniques whether or not you are traditional or digital um, i will say though i will say that it is it ends up usually being easier to do some of the things that i'm covering here uh digitally because for example if you want to flip your canvas you can do this but if you're doing that traditionally you might have to like either take a photo and then flip it on your camera or you'll have to uh i don't know you'll have to be creative is, is is what i'm saying you know you'll have to find some creative means and some creative ways to um establish uh some of those similar type of uh, techniques so I will say that I will I will I will definitely you know preface by saying like yeah there's there are going to be some things here that are easier to do because we're doing it digitally um but that doesn't that shouldn't hold you back and make you feel like this is a digital only stream yeah you can grab a mirror I don't know there's so many you know what I'm saying there's a lot of different techniques you can do um yeah you can you can pick up the canvas face the mirror um for me the easiest thing because I'm lazy to get up <laughs> I'll just I'll just grab my phone and take a picture of it if I am doing something traditional, like a painting or something, just grab my phone, take a photo, look at it, flip it. I'm like, okay, yeah, that could use some work. You know, that area right there looks a little interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just some general, general tips right there for those of you who are on the traditional path. You walk in that path of life. Uh, what are they holding in the reference? Is that a glass? I think it's supposed to be like, honestly, I'm not too sure, but I think it's some sort of glass like bat thing, but we're going to, we're just going to turn it into a weapon. Like I'm thinking of turning this into some fan art just for fun. Like with you guys, like maybe we'll just take this pose and we'll draw some characters on here. Not too sure. Uh, yeah. When was the last time I did traditional art? Mm, maybe about a few days ago. I just have a sketchbook and stuff that I draw on on occasion. Um, but I, not on stream. It's been, I don't think I've done traditional art on stream ever actually because it's just so much harder to i think set up a traditional art stream and so shout out to the shout out to those of you who who stream you know traditional and you paint and all that stuff you guys are dope actually insane make it a case and poster <laughs> yeah maybe maybe we'll make it a poster um but yeah take a look at this see we've got here the pose already not looking too shabby i would say um you know Again, I'm just utilizing a lot of those basic shapes here to lock out these forms. 
and then from those basic shapes really going in and um really going in here and actually just kind of incorporating that into the other elements here of the drawing and again just i'm going back and forth here so i'm saying like okay like if the if the foot is this long if this is how big we drew the foot let's bring that back a little bit and let's kind of shrink that in and then let's kind of you know see how how far that the um how far that pelvis is going to be how big is that pelvis going to be and then if you draw the pelvis how you know how big is the torso going to be in relation to the pelvis right so it's all of these things um and hey spice illustrations hey welcome in i know you stream on twitch i'm pretty sure i watch you on twitch actually Welcome in. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Um, what's the minimum level of anatomy knowledge should an artist learn to be able to work in studio level jobs? Ooh, yeah. I feel like you've been. <laughs> I feel like you've been here before. Um, it's okay. It's okay. I know sometimes it's weird. It's sometimes Twitch is like that. It like unfollows people all of a sudden. It's cool. Um, what's the minimum level of, uh, so there's someone's asking right now, what's the minimum level of anatomy knowledge should an artist have to be able to work in a studio level job? Okay. So here's what I'll say. Anatomy is great to have. And if anything, I tell everybody you should learn anatomy at some point in your career. Um, but do you actually need, um, do you actually need anatomy to, to be able to do your job? Not necessarily. Um, I think what's more important than knowing the anatomy of the human body is being able to know the proportions and understand the overall kind of forms of the human body. Because if you can do that, and let's say, for example, if you understand that the arm, let's say this is, uh, let's say with this, is there a good reference here? Okay. Let's say you have a torso, right? This is a torso inside view like this. If you know that the that the torso is roughly kind of this shape inside view, and if you know that the arms has this curvature here, and that the back side of the arms kind of curve this way, uh, and then they kind of straighten out this way when when the arm is in this position, right? And then you kind of you know let's say this is the this is the elbow and all of that stuff, right? So as long as you have a general idea of how the human how the human body works, like here's the bicep here, uh, and then here's maybe that same arm now, but now we're gonna have it bent forward, right? As long as you have that idea and you know how, how the body works, technically speaking, you don't need to know the names of these things, right? I think it's good to know the names of these things because if you know the names of these things, it makes it easier to convey, right? Makes it easier to say like, okay, cool. This right here is a guy who's flexing his, uh, his arms and that's why this bicep is curved this way and the tricep is, is stretched out this way. Whereas if he's doing like, let's say a, um, a tricep pull down, right? Um, what's happening here is now the tricep is curved this way and then the bicep is stretched, right? So like you don't have to know the, the names, but knowing the names, uh, definitely gives you, uh, gives you more of an advantage. But as long as you have a general idea of the human body and the proportions and how those things work and how you can kind of convey characters and stuff, I think that's honestly what I think is uh, more important. But there you go. Here's my really quick drawing of an arm and stuff. Um, yeah. Did that make sense? I don't know. Uh, let me, let me know in the chat if that made any sense. Um, I think generally to, to get to that level, um, I think people end up learning anatomy anyways. Uh, but there are many ways I've seen artists who just are really good at observing life, for example, right? They've, 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 uh, they've studied life and because they study life, and they study the real world and stuff. They build like, a good intuition of being able to draw characters uh, without having to necessarily know all the anatomy. Um, you can you can do it that way too, though. I think that's actually a lot harder. <laughs> Personally speaking, if you were to tell me like, yeah, just just keep drawing from life every day and observe the human body and learn learn it that way versus just like looking at some diagrams and learning how the body works that way. I personally would just I'd rather do that because I think it, it's more. It makes more sense, but I do know a few artists. I've met some people who, for example, worked at Marvel who were like, yeah, I don't really know the names. I just know how they look and I know how to draw them. That's it. And yeah, that's, that's honestly all you need to know, right? You don't, you know, <laughs> if you could, as long as you can draw it, that's, that's, that's good enough. Um, I like to know the names because I think if I know the names, it makes it easier to understand. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's plenty of people I know who work, who work that way too. Um, how do you use perspective grid? I don't get in my brain can't wrap around it. Um, yeah, so we, I would say, so today's a little bit more of a loose interpretation of doing dynamic poses and perspective, uh, 
uh, Pull Pro. But if you want to learn a little bit more about perspective, I would actually go to my previous day, so day 22 um, of my boot camp, which actually covers drawing multiple characters in perspective. I would say this one is not as insane as what we're doing today. Um, it's a little bit more relaxed. And this one right here, I actually go over how to draw, you know, multiple characters in perspective, how to lay them out and some of the basic shapes there. And then we also at the end, I drew kind of like a model on top of these. So I'll show you what it looks like um, without her on here. See? Um, so that's actually what we did. Um, that's actually what we did uh, on the other stream. Okay. So. But this one right here is a little bit more complicated. Uh, with that, you can imagine the body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, thank you for the follows. Really, I genuinely do appreciate all the follows today. Jason Lan Art, uh, La Ruby, Crash 05. Um, thank you for the refollow. Spice Illustrations, Anti Illustrations, Everton, Mateus, Killer B. I loved, I'd love to know, genuinely, for those of you guys who are here following right now, how did you guys come across my stream today? How did you find me? Was it through... Uh, was it through the front page? Was it through recommended? Was it through my, my YouTube channel? Was it through Instagram? Um, I know there are some people here who know me from classes that we took together. So yeah, let me know how people came across, uh, how you guys kind of came across my stream. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of change up the form, but you can kind of see here, we already have now a simplified structure, um, of the character, right? And we've drawn them out in this perspective. And again, it's not going to be exact. And that's okay. I'm not trying to make it super exact and make everything line up on a perspective grid. I want it to be more of a loose interpretation here to show you guys that at the end of the day, I think reality, not, um, when you look at reality, not everything is going to line up perfectly in perspective, right? There are going to be some things that are going to be a little bit more loose. Uh, some things are going to go, you know, slightly off a little bit when they, when, when they kind of uh, line up there on the grid. And so, don't feel like you have to do everything in a 1.2 point perspective and every single thing you draw has to line up to that because in reality most things don't most things are not going to line up exactly on a on a, a clean grid there's going to be some warping there's going to be some uh um you know some changes and stuff and that is completely fine now here here's what i can do i can for example uh let's say i'll kind of bring this one here and i'm going to use here the vertical axis now and I'm going to say, okay, I want this little cylinder here to kind of go this way, right? So we'll do a little bit of that maybe, or actually I want it to be a little bit higher up. So we'll kind of use that. So kind of just giving it some uh, structure there. So I can use the grid to give me some, uh, to inform a little bit more of the shot, but you know, you don't have to use it um, extensively. So now I have to erase all these lines though. See, I should have, <laughs> I should have done that on a different layer, whatever. Uh, it's okay. So here's like this girl. She's holding out her weapon. Uh, super cool. Uh, super cool dope shot right here. I really like this reference that I found. Um, and then we'll probably flip this and try to turn it into like a design really quick. We'll see. We'll see how uh, if we have time and stuff. Because I want to make sure. I want to make sure as well that we got some time for this. Uh, I popped in a recommended and I was like, wait a minute. You sound recommended too? Damn. Hey, how's it going? Lee, Lee Dong. Um, I wish I, I wish I spoke Korean. I don't, but glad to have you on here. Thank you so much for all the follows too. Not James, uh, Janis draws, uh, one P and everyone else coming in. Do you think a doctor could draw anatomically correct humans since they also study anatomy? Possibly. I think they're not too far off. I think earlier there was a question of whether or not I know all the muscles of the human body. I would say I know a good number. Um, I would say I know I know enough that is relevant to drawing, I think, but I don't know every single muscle and I don't know every single bone, I think, of the human body. Um, like, for example, there's a lot of small, like, uh, intricacies in, for example, the ear that I don't, I don't know too much about, right? Because I care mostly just about drawing the ear. And so because of that, I care mostly about the shape of the ear. So the helix, the anti-helix, um, the targus, I believe it's what it's called. Um, so I care about those things. And I think that for me is more important uh, as an artist than knowing all the details. But I do, but in general, you, I do know a good amount, I would say, of the, um, of the human body, just because there are, there are a lot of things to draw. Uh, then you would follow to uh, Nathan and Doggy Tell. 
Um, I don't know that streamer. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know every streamer on, on Twitch. I mostly only know art streamers. So I, I mostly just watch art streamers and the occasional big streamer like XQC, Hassan, um, Kai Sinat and stuff like that. Um, people also care that the ear is present. Yes. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I mean, ha being able to showcase the ear, if that's what you're referring to, um, I think is, is, you know, good to know. So it's good to know how to draw as many things as, as, uh, as you can. But like there are, again, like there are so many like internal muscles and stuff that you don't necessarily need to know about. So yeah. Juicer. <laughs> I'm not a juicer. I just occasionally lurk in those streams because I think they're funny. Um, I think those streamers are funny. I don't think they would ever come to my stream though. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. And this is not to say that my content is bad or anything. Um, I just feel like my content is educational content and I don't know. I don't think not everybody is into educational stuff. I think there's a few people who, who like educational content. And, uh, for those of you who are here for that, I'm glad, um, I'm glad that you're here watching, watching my streams, you know? But I know that this is not like for everybody on Twitch, you know. If you're into art, perfect. I think I think this is hopefully <laughs> hopefully a valuable stream uh, for you to watch. Do I know Orangey? Yeah, I know Orangey. All right, but there you go. So we've got here our general pose, right? And again, I'm keeping these pretty loose um, that we've got so far, right? Nothing too crazy here, but now let's kind of go in and maybe let's, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put away the reference now and then I'm gonna, we're gonna go in and maybe just kind of draw out some fun stuff here, uh, for this shot that we've got here. So let's go ahead and maybe bring this one. I'm going to actually, maybe I'll take all this and let me kind of bring it up here like that. And let's put away the reference. We don't need the reference anymore. So this is just a quick demo to show you guys, um, you know, to show you guys how you can take something like this and then maybe turn it into a design for a character. Like, let's say you are working on a show, right? You're working on a production or you just want to make a cool illustration, right? And you're kind of like, yo, I like this reference and stuff. Let's kind of go in here and I'll, I'll show you guys how I can maybe take this and... Uh, draw this into a character. I don't know necessarily yet which character we're going to draw. I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. Um, every one of my streams is a founder of development knowledge. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot, actually. Um, I try to, yeah, <laughs> I try to make my content as valuable, um, to those of you who are willing to watch it and stuff. So if you guys are here and you're checking out my content and you've been enjoying it, I really do appreciate that. Um, thank you so much. Did I get a master's yet? In, did I get master's on league yet? No, I didn't get master's. I played a lot of normal games yesterday and they were trash. So trash. Ah, uh, I can't. I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm getting tilted. I'm getting tilted just, talk, just talking about it. Um, League fan art. Maybe we should. Uh, thank you, Marita. Appreciate that. A Nebula Splat. Welcome in, guys. Um, I want to draw. Let's see if you guys can guess. Because if, if you guys, <laughs> if I draw a character and it's just like super off, I'm not even going to tell you guys who I'm drawing. But if I can get it right, um, then like maybe... I'll let you guys know and be like, yeah, that's, that's who I'm drawing. But I'll show you guys how I lay in kind of like these, these uh, shots as well, because I think this is a, this is a very tough pose, um, overall. So we'll kind of see it's Mario. How, how, how did you know? <laughs> Mario and Luigi, the new cover for the, for the upcoming movie. How did you guys know I was working on that? <laughs> what the heck? OP chat chat is OP man we got some hackers out here yo how's it going Kobo hey how's it going Kobo welcome back in how have you been chat knows too much I'm I'm questioning chat
album of their latest hit banger yeah this is uh this is it this is what we're working on 100 percent um let's see you've been doing um oh you've been doing all right nice that's great to hear yeah i've been doing well too uh we've been we've been good out here um having fun out here on twitch and just trying to be productive and trying to continue making art educational art content because i don't know i like it i like doing it and i feel like there are people out here who also enjoy seeing it so just keep doing that keep doing me and enjoying the process i don't know if this is going to look like the character i want but it's okay we're just having fun here um I want to just kind of knock out some uh, designs here for, for this. I'll let you guys know. I'll tell you guys who it is. I'm trying if, if you guys can't figure it out. Hmm. And I'll speed it up. I'll keep it a loose drawing as well. Um, let's see here. Do you think expression is basically a combination of mouth and eyebrows or that's there's something else to consider while drawing? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, Fies, Fiesatra. Fiesatra. Um, great question. Great question. Um, I think yes and yes. And I think a little bit more. So I think what's interesting about, um, what's interesting in general about facial expressions is that I think that it's more than just the brows and stuff, uh, the brows and the eyes. I do think that in general, when you um, include all the elements of the brows and the eyes and stuff, you're also, for example, changing how the cheeks work. You're also changing how the, um, you're also changing how maybe the nose kind of crinkles a little bit too. Maybe there's a furrowing there. So I usually tell people like, yes, I think the biggest thing is going to be the the biggest things are going to be the eyes, the brows. So this region right here, as well as the region here, um, the region of the mouth, right? And those two things and everything in between are going to, I think, lead to some interesting, uh, interesting uh, expressions. So we actually cover, we cover expressions a lot on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, here you go. Also, fun fact for those of you coming in here, we just actually hit 5K subscribers on my YouTube channel. I've been uploading, I think, for the past month now. So over the past uh, 30 days. And so we hit 5K um, in that time frame. So thank you so much for ever, all the support out here. Still a baby. Still a baby on YouTube and figuring out how, how all things work. But I'm glad that for the most part, um, there are people who are finding my content and finding and, and finding them helpful though. I will say a good number of you guys, not that this is a bad thing. A good number of you guys actually come from my Twitch channel, which is, which is, I think fine. That's, that's cool with me. As long as there's someone out there finding my content helpful. Do I watch Owl House? Um, no, I don't actually, but I've heard good things from it. And, um, Spencer Juan, who used to work at powerhouse, um, he worked on Owl House, actually. I think he might have even... I think he did the intro and he might have directed a few of the episodes out here. Um, let's see here. Would you consider throwing this picture away and letting me lay in your desk and draw you? Oof, that's a tough one. I don't know about that. I'd have to think. <laughs> probably not. Probably not, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, welcome in. How's it going, Luther Red? Welcome in as well. Um, yeah, it's all good. Yo, Bagel Denizen, thank you so much. Appreciate the uh, the resub for five months. How have you been? Sheesh. How have you been? Glad to have you. Um, glad to have you uh, back on here. Thanks again for that for that sub. Appreciate it. Um. Gearing up for another con this weekend. Oh, right. The NY one. Yeah, I've heard about that one. So many conventions that I wish I could attend, but unfortunately, I am uh, i don't really have con stuff to, to give. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Can you guys tell who this is now? I think, I think, I think some of the details are kind of there, uh, but also here is, um, here's a little thing here. Doo -doo, my dog. Someone requested it. 
Oh, thank you for the raid. Illustrations. Appreciate that. Can we get a shout out real quick for illustrations? Or actually, I'll do it. No worries. Um, do you use exclamation mark shout out? Oh, there you go. Um, it's Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. Yes, indeed it is. Um, indeed it is. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, give me a sec, guys. <clears throat> uh, one second. Piss music. But yeah, there's my dog right there. For those of you wondering. Um, let's see where, uh, ooh, me. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you guys <laughs> who we're trying <laughs> because I don't know if it's I don't know if it's gonna look good. But yeah, no, we're trying. We're gonna try. We're gonna see. Uh we're gonna see if it turns out well uh as a design here. But yeah, I'm I'm mostly out here just kind of laying out some of the details here that we've got um again for this for this character and stuff. So, yeah. Um is there any is there going to be another boot camp after this one is over? Yes. So after after this um after we cover this after we finish this boot camp, we're actually going to be doing another boot camp. It'll be a different set of topics. Um but the topics that we're going to be covering are actually going to be focused primarily on drawing different types of characters. So this first boot camp that we're doing here, uh, most of this is primarily again focused on um, the basics of drawing characters. So we go over all the different things like the anatomy. We go over how to draw different poses for our characters, stuff like that. Um, did I really draw on this layer? Oh my gosh. Um, whereas the uh, there you go. Um, whereas the next boot camp is going to be more focused on drawing different types so we'll be looking at drawing old people we'll be looking at drawing children how to draw you know male characters how to draw uh buff characters fat characters skinny characters so that's going to be more of that focus uh whereas this one is really more of like the basics of how things work um perspective anatomy um and so forth hopefully that makes sense um but yeah, it'll it'll be fun. It'll be a fun boot camp. So again, if you guys are if you guys are just finding my stream for the first time and you're like, oh man, case am I just joined in, but you're already on day 23 of your boot camp, that sucks. Like, don't worry, because again, we got plenty, I got plenty of topics that we're gonna be going over um out here. Um out here on my streams. So yeah. Plenty, plenty of topics. If anything, we got too many topics, <laughs> too many topics to choose from. Um, and I have to kind of pick and choose. Uh, but yeah, right now I'm just, I'm just laying out here, kind of just a rough design for this character. I'm not actually going to finish this one out and kind of ink it and everything. I think I just wanted to give a, a, a general rough illustration here. Um, isn't the second boot camp more for you than than this? Wait. Oh, you're talking to to illustrations. Yeah, it might be beneficial for some of you guys. Um, because uh, I think for some for some of you who I think are beginners, I think this boot camp, the one that we're covering right now, I would say is really a valuable one. It's the one that I think a lot of you know beginners just start off with learning some of the basics and fundamentals of drawing, um, characters, right? Uh, but then as you as you start to develop and stuff and you want to be able to diversify your skill sets, I think that's where um, that's where I think this this next boot camp can come in really handy, hopefully. Um, but yeah. Okay, I think you guys know who this is now, <laughs> or who I'm trying to draw, uh, but we'll see. Uh, did I do any landscape or game concept art? No. So professionally, I've only done I've only done um, character design and animation, um, and I work in the animation industry, so I have not done. Um, I would say I've not done any uh, any.
any any environment stuff professionally. Though I do admire a lot of the people who do that stuff. Like, sheesh. Man, man, oh man. I've seen, there are some people at Powerhouse who make some insane, ridiculous backgrounds for the episodes. And I'm just like, how? How do you do it? Actual madness. <laughs> Actual madness out here. Uh, but no, I don't, I don't do that. Um, though there might, not to say that I'll, I, I will never do it. I think there might come a time in the future where I'll find it interesting or I'll want to develop those skills. Um, and so in which case I will, you know, practice more of those skill sets necessary. But right now I, I enjoy doing, um, I'll, I enjoy doing uh, character design and stuff. So that's kind of my ballpark. Um, Will these boot camp streams be uh, on YouTube? Yeah, they're actually already on YouTube, guys. So if you guys want to see, I upload these every twice a week out here, actually. So I've already uploaded the first eight days of my boot camp, and they're actually edited versions. So they're better to watch on YouTube than to watch my Twitch VODs because um, they're slightly edited. My editors work really hard to clean them up and, you know, make all that cool bells and whistles and stuff. So I would highly recommend it for those of you who are... Um who are checking it out. Also, I realized I forgot to draw an arm. There was straight up an arm here that I just ignored when I when I was drawing out the mannequin. It's right here. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, let me let me add that in really quick. What the heck? Um But yeah, that's um that's what I'll say about all that stuff. Um Check out the check out the the, the videos because I think those are going to be uh helpful and stuff. Uh, I'll jump off the stream now then. <laughs> yeah, okay. See ya. No, thank, thank you for coming out. Even if you do got to drop off, you guys know I always appreciate. I appreciate all the all the follows out here. Um, but all right, let's just... I'm just going to go quickly on this one. I'm just going to kind of slap on some uh, quick kind of drawings again. Um, using some of the gestural techniques here for clothing folds to kind of get this one going. Uh, maybe we're going to have some folds that go like this. But just kind of giving you guys, this is not, again, supposed to be like a, f a finished illustration or anything. I'm just trying to show you guys how to take a pose, um, these more mannequin-like shapes, and then be able to, you know, draw draw more out here. Um, I think Zoro has boots. Oh, shoot. I said his name. Yeah, I'm drawing Zoro. <laughs> I was like, no, I said it. Yeah, but I think you guys could kind of tell. This is like uh, old, old Zoro. I've decided I want to make more One Piece fan art, even if it's just casual fan art with you guys while I'm drawing uh, demos and stuff. I love One Piece. I'm a big One Piece fan, so um, you don't need two arms. True. We could hide it. It's not hard to hide it, actually. Um, we could hide it right here and stuff. Um, so your YouTube videos are better than my live streams. Um, the older ones. Yeah, I would say, but my live streams are newer and fresher and more entertaining. So if you want the, if you want the interactive stuff, then yeah, I would still say that my, my Twitch streams are probably the best place to go. Um, but if you're just looking to learn and just want tutorial stuff, um, check out my YouTube videos. Again, they're not up to date are they're, they're they're a little bit behind obviously than my live streams are because my editors are still working on them um but you know they they again cover a lot of the the topics that we have here so yeah um yo how's it going kaiser welcome back in recent zora has a drip yeah no nah, he does 100 percent. can't deny that Um, but yeah, I think for this one, I'm just going to kind of quickly draw these out again. Um, super rough sketches. So apologies if you're like, yo, Kasem, why, why aren't you finishing this one up? It's not, yeah, it's not supposed to be a how to draw one piece character stream. I just in the mood right now to draw a little bit of fan art, uh, while we're tackling, uh, proportions and, and, um, uh, while we're tackling all these like kind of components and stuff and also I think it's a good way for me to also showcase uh, a little bit of foreshortening too because while I think it's cool to, sh to see the mannequin and stuff that we're that we're covering 
Um, I think it's also nice to be able to uh, see some bit more of the organic forms and how I turn maybe some of these uh, a little bit more uh, rougher blocky shapes into the more kind of characters that you would actually see, right? Thanks for the cheat sheets, Kaysen. They helped me revise my character sheets. Oh, that's super dope. Which actually reminds me, guys, um, if you guys are new here and if you haven't been to the Discord channel yet, every single time that I'm live, I just want you guys to know there are free stuff that you guys can grab. You can grab today's worksheet right here where, we, where we're going to be covering some dynamic perspective using high view and low view perspective, also known as top down and... and uh, down down lower whatever it's called um here is also another cheat sheet that i am that will uh as part of actually my my digital art book i'll be releasing later this year uh and i cover some things like foreshortening perspective uh contours and all that stuff and then here is a cheat sheet that i compiled from andrew loomis's um book on anatomy or not anatomy on perspective so these are free to grab while i'm live on stream if you're not watching live uh come to my live streams okay because that's one thing that my youtubers don't get so my uh my youtube community you guys don't get that unfortunately so check out my lives you guys know um Will I be using three-point perspective? A, um, a little bit. We can. We can use it. But again, I want to remind you guys, um, I think three-point perspective is mostly just, it's all about warping the the vertical space. And so we can definitely do some of that. Um, technically speaking, we can actually do that already with this illustration. So I'll show you guys how to warp this into a more three-point perspective view. Um, but yeah. But yeah, welcome in everybody who's out here right now. I don't know if you guys are watching me from the front page or if you're watching me from, I don't know, recommended or whatever, uh, where, wherever you're watching me from. Thank you so much for all the support. I do hope you guys are enjoying the content today. Um, I'm trying to keep it super, super light and stuff out here. Uh, because I feel like, you know, while it's good to go over all the crazy details, I think this is, I have to also keep in mind that you know, everyone who's watching here, you might not necessarily be, uh, you might be at different levels. So I want to try to make this one as, um, as accessible as I can. Um, let's see here. So I think Zoro just has very simple boots actually, which is kind of cool for the animation. But for our sake right here, I feel like we kind of have to, I want to give him just a little bit more to make it look stand, to make it stand out a bit. Uh, because this is such a dynamic shot that, you know, we kind of want to, I kind of want to give him a little bit something here. So I'm just drawing these out from, uh, some of these things I'm drawing from imagination. Some of these things I have like the reference for, for the characters from, um, So here I'm going to like utilize the perspective that we have and I'm actually going to use that to again leverage here some of the proportions and stuff and and even leverage some of the the perspective that we have of this design of this character. So you can still use um you know you can still use a lot of uh, the the perspective in many subtle ways. So you can use it in the wrinkles of the of the of the shoe here for example, right? You can use it in the way that you're angling uh, certain particular things. So there's a lot of like cool little tricks you can do to still convey perspective without having to actually uh, go in and, you know, uh, go in here and, and, and draw out the perspective grid. I think sometimes inferring these things is actually what a lot of uh, like artists like Kim Jong Yi, for example, love to do techniques like that, man. Um, they uh, rest in peace with Kim Jong-e, but they, they were known for kind of utilizing these kind of small, subtle details to convey such a dynamic uh, perspective. So you can probably do the same thing uh, on your own kind of designs and stuff. Um, here, I'm just kind of adding in some like shiny boot boots things. I don't know, some squigglies out here, you know, something like that seems fine. Um, add a little bit of thickness here for the pants. And I think we're good there. So let me go in and you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to just um, go in here. Oops, go back do that. Uh, give Zoro the Tims. <laughs> New York Zoro. Yer. Mm, I love Asanji's legs are drawn in the early part of the series. 
Yeah, you know, I think there's actually a lot of charm in the earlier, um, the earlier s designs of One Piece. Personally, I know I, it's interesting because when I was younger, I hated how One Piece looked like. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. When I first was watching One Piece when I was a kid, I was like, dude, this is so ugly. I hate the style of One Piece. Um, but I've learned actually that there's a lot of beauty in the style, and in particular, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, with the style that the artist is able to to leverage when they're designing their characters and, and being able to create such insane scenes, uh, both comedically, but also from an action perspective. Um, and so that's honestly why I love I love One Piece. I used something that I used to hate about it is actually one of the reasons why I really like it. So sometimes, you know, your perspective on things may change. If you guys haven't seen One Piece yet, check it out. <laughs> This is not a this is not a one piece sponsored stream, though that would be insanely dope. This is just a um just a regular stream out here on Twitch trying to teach art and all that jazz. The newer art style is not your thing. Yeah, it's it's uh it's 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 definitely a, a preference for a lot of people. Um, you know. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. My dog is just <laughs> my dog. My dog just never lays on his bed. I'm sorry, guys. I know some of you are here waiting for my dog to lay on his bed. You will have to wait potentially a very, very, very long time for that to happen. Okay. Okay, um, let's go in and maybe I'll just draw Nami here real quick. I don't know. I don't know who we should draw. Maybe Nami. She seems like she's like she's holding like a mm, kind of like a baton kind of thing. So I'll just throw Nami in here really quick. This is relaxing to watch as your skeleton sketch develops into sharper drawings. Thank you. Yeah, again, this is a super rough sketch. So this is like this is what I would consider my like rough sketch. If I were to um, if I was being asked to like to cook up a scene or something like an animated keyframe or something um for work this is like this is the rough that i would send to my supervisor i'd be like hey does this rough look okay this is definitely by no means the final <laughs> this is like very uh very 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 rough stuff but yeah no um so you got to start somewhere right that's kind of how how it always works not every illustration is going to look insanely detailed so that would be dope if I could do that. I would save so much time at work if I could just be like, yeah, look at this. Here you go. Done. See ya. Let me clock out of work nice and early. That would be nice, but I'm not at that level yet where I can make finished illustrations on the first try and then have my supervisors be like, yep, perfect. You're good to go. You can go home. If anything, if I do that, they'll just give me more work. They're just like, oh, you finished early? Here's another scene to work on. <laughs> here's a here's another thing to uh, to fix out there because... Uh, that's yeah that's how that's how working works i guess um i was a better artist since i was a kid so i never actually tried but i love watching and i appreciate art and now i want to improve and i want to start doodling on my diary uh oh nice it's super awesome uh friendly youtube channel um is there any beginner friendly YouTube channel or artist who teaches doodling or any small curated courses? Mm. Amanda Rachel Lee, she's a friend of mine and she makes cool stuff like that. Actually, do a little doodle stuff. I would say my YouTube channel is definitely not like a doodling kind of stream. We go, it's more for people I feel like who really want to, um, who really want to, to kind of level up and stuff. Oh shoot, I forgot to draw his eyes. Shoot, that's what I forgot. Hmm. Just some quick pupils. No, nothing again. This is like super rough, so I would I would fix this one up. 
Uh, let me tilt this eye down. Okay, cool. Uh, going back to going back to Nami. Is this Zoro? Yeah, uh, just just for fun. I'm just trying to draw some some characters on top of these mannequins here that we that we established for you guys. Um, and then we'll go we'll go back to some other examples. Okay, so I know this is um, we got a lot here we're covering today. So uh, bear with me, bear with me on this one. We're gonna we're gonna get to it. And um, yeah, I'm also drawing these in like my style too. So. If they don't look necessarily like the characters, again, I'm sorry. This is not, I don't, I don't draw One Piece characters professionally, though that would actually be super sick. Um, that'd be super dope. Is there anything you struggle or hate drawing? I hate drawing hands. Um, I think hands are tough. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I definitely think hands are a bit of a doozy. Um, I would say if there's anything I, I, I kind of struggle with, like, let's say at work and stuff. Uh, is when they give me some crazy like Sakuga stuff to work on, like crazy um, poses where the character is moving around a lot. Like, yo, <laughs> I'm not good at that yet, but it's cool. It's a learning experience. Um, it's not that I hate it. It's just like, I know that I have to, I have to like really think about it and stuff. Um, no, everything. So here's my portfolio for those of you who are curious. Um, here's all my work and stuff uh, portfolio. Um, but stuff that I'm doing more more uh, recently is that's going to be all NDA. So unfortunately, I can't show uh, anything. Um, let's see here, but yeah, welcome in, welcome in everyone who's coming in today. Hopefully you guys are doing well out here. And even if you guys are just chilling out here today and just enjoying the stream, glad to have you guys on here. Um, out of curiosity, are there any, um, are there any One Piece fans in the chat or just, uh, are there any anime fans in the chat? I know One Piece, not a lot of people watch or not a lot of, uh, there's some people who don't watch One Piece, but how about anime in general? Are there any anime fans in the chat? And if so... Hit me with your uh, top top three animes. I want to see. Let's stir the pot today, man. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mushroomish. Appreciate the kind words. Violet Evergarden. I think I've heard that one. I love One Piece. Hey, let's go. Um, top three. I know. What a tough choice, huh? Uh, is that Nami and Zoro? Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing how it's going to turn out. We're just, we're just knocking it out. Uh, oh, Vox Machina. Oh my God, dude. Titmouse did an amazing job at, on Vox Machina. Um, Phil Barasa killed it. Ah, oh, Phil, if you're watching me right now, Phil, and if you're looking for season three of Vox Machina, hey, just know your boy can do some freelance out here. Technically studios, if you're watching me right now, I am, I'm actually open for freelance work. I'm, I still work full, full time at powerhouse, but that does not mean I cannot do freelance. I've been, I've been cleared to, to potentially work freelance. So yeah, but, um, dude, Vox Machina is on my like list or just, or just things that are like Vox Machina adjacent, but I love the designs off Vox Machina, man. So fire. So good. What kind of clothing does Nami wear? Oh, she got like a V-neck? You crazy, Nami. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay. Um, Yo Yoshinari, what a legend. Oh, yeah. They're insane. Any anything they work on and produce is like, whew. I agree. Um, okay, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna speed up this drawing for you guys. Hopefully that's okay. Um, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna clean these up. Okay, so I'm sorry if you want, if you did want me to clean these up. That's not the focus of today's stream. Sorry. Um, I will, I will, I will. Maybe another day we'll, we'll like revisit it. We'll revisit these designs and then maybe we'll, 
we'll come up with something fun and we'll we'll make it into like an actual illustration but for today i'm gonna speed this one up really quick here and yeah And this is like Nami when she's, uh, what's her call? When she's ca carrying her, uh, baton thing. I don't know if it has a name, but that's what she's. Oh, did she even have the baton at, at, at this part of the show? In the beginning? I don't know what weapon she had. I think she had a baton. She had like some, I think she had that since the beginning, actually. The baton weapon. Uh, climb attack. Yeah, there you go. Studio trigger is super dope. Yeah, there's a lot of studios I'd like to work for. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, that's on my top two. Uh, not top, not mm, top three. Top three is Full Metal in my top three. Oof, that's tough. I would say, yeah, I'd put Full Metal on my top three. Full Metal Alchemist, top three. One Piece is on my top three. And then a little bit of a sneaker one that I feel like not a lot of people put on their top three. Um, I'm putting easily, without a doubt, I'm putting in, um, uh, what's it called? Samurai Champloo. Don't even at me on this. Anyone who tells me that Samurai Champloo is not goaded, you're crazy, okay? <laughs> I'm just, nah, that's fine. If you don't like Samurai Champloo, that's okay. But like, I personally feel like Samurai Champloo was such a pivotal, man, it was such a pivotal uh, part of of music and also a pivotal, pivotal part of just like um, anime in general with just how influential it was. Um, so I'll put it up there. Samurai Champloo. Goaded. So good. There you go. I'm glad. I'm glad there's some, there's some uh, Samurai Champloo fans out here and I'm not like crazy. But yeah. Like if you've ever listened to hip hop, not hip hop, <laughs> lo-fi hip hop in particular, I feel like you can, you can have, um, you can thank Samurai Champloo for that because they really put... They really put lo-fi hip hop on the map. For sure. All right. Um I think this one's mostly done. Um, we've got here the general kind of take here for Nami. Um, again, super, super rough, but I think you guys get the idea. She really wore boots? She wore boots? What? Really? Strange. For some reason, I thought Nami wore sandals. But maybe that's like in the later... Uh, maybe in the later episodes of One Piece, she changes her outfit into... Um, into sandals? I swear I thought she had sandals from the beginning, but maybe not. Okay. Uh, what about Zora's right arm? Oh, shoot. There's so many things I forgot to draw. Okay, okay, fine. We're going to go back in and I'm going to add Zoro's other details. Sorry, sorry. You're right. We cannot neglect all of these important things, guys. You are so right. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to we're gonna add it all in. All right, give me a sec. Totally forgot about all these. Um, oh, shoot. Really quick. I do run ads on my stream every hour. Um, there you go. Um, I do run I do run ads on my stream every hour. One's going to be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. Um, again, they do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do uh, what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So if you get an ad, thank you. And also, if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a Prime sub out here. But either way, thank you for the support. And I hope to see you guys after the ad break. 
if you want the hand, yeah. If you want my hand, you got to go to my uh, my OnlyFans to see the hand drawing. No, I'm kidding. I, I don't have an OnlyFans. Don't don't search me on there. <laughs> trolling, trolling. I, I don't have any of that. Um, but yes. Uh, let's go back here and let's lock in the. Let's go finish up the hand for Zoro, which I totally neglected. So let's go ahead and just kind of draw out here a boxy structure for the hands. Um, here, we're going to kind of just add that in. Maybe it'll go like this. I don't know. Okay, this is this is good enough for me. He's kind of just holding, he's kind of holding his sword. Uh, pretty kind of loosely there and then on this side right here we're gonna have his other arm which is gonna go down like this and then maybe that arm will uh, kind of go in here like so and that one will just hold on to the remaining portion there of his sword right here there you go Zora's missing two swords I'll add them give me a sec give me a sec sheesh this is why, see, this is why I don't want to tell you guys who I was drawing, because now you're going to be like, wait a minute, Zoro's missing something. And I'm like, please, this was just an example. <sighs> but you're right. We can't draw Zoro. It's not actually Zoro if he doesn't have his three swords, right? Well, no, technically, no. He's had, he's had scenes where he's, uh, he's lost his swords and stuff, and he's like only fighting with one sword. So it's not like, uh, it's not like completely out of the, the question that he wouldn't have a sword, but we're going to add it in for my fans out here, for my One Piece fans. Okay. Here's a very janky hand. Please don't, don't zoom in on the hand. <laughs> we're just, we're just making it nice and uh, nice and rough there. This is that, this is that, um, this is that still frame animation shot hand that they always show in an anime where it's like everything is drawn super well. And then you have like that one hand or that one freeze frame hand that's just like, huh? <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Good enough. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's add swords, and I think we're done with this one. Actually, I think, hold on, it should be right there on the hip. All right. There you go. Uh, rough, rough drawing of Nami and Zoro, uh, out here using the perspective demo that we had using kind of that top down perspective. Um, hopefully this was helpful again to see, we've got another demo that we're going to do. I don't know if we'll keep drawing one piece characters or if we'll have time to, but, um, yeah, this is kind of, uh, the, again, the example I wanted to show you guys, right? So you can take again, um, these kind of rough rough mannequins that we have right and then from these rough mannequins here kind of slap on some more detail and form that hopefully you can utilize for your own uh character illustrations or if you're working in animation or whatever have you um but there you go helpful not helpful let me know in the chat uh we got a jason redemption out here what is this jason redemption here we go uh, hey guys, it's me, Jason out here, got a message from bots. They said that uh, they love One Piece and uh, Deku is their favorite character, you know, that one character in One Piece that like flings his boogers. Yeah, favorite character, Deku. There you go. Um, cool. All right, so we've got here this one. I think this is fun. I, again, I don't normally draw characters on top of these things, but I think maybe this will be like a more of a regular thing that we do out here. Uh, let's go ahead and merge or group all these out and maybe I'll put it like right here just so that we have a little bit of a reference example for people who are coming in and are like, Hey, what are you talking about when you mean perspective? There you go. This is what I'm talking about. 
uh, right here. Super loose, grungy perspective. But now let's go in and let's talk about um, looking now at characters in a uh, top-down view or um, kind of something like this where maybe there's not a clear example. Now, between these two, I'm going to let you guys choose which one, which one you guys want me to go over today first. Um, if, I'm, if we have time, I'll try to go over both, but I want to give you guys the option. Okay, so you got one or two out here today. These are your two, uh, two options. I'll make a poll for you guys. You guys can vote here. Uh, a little bit of democracy. All right. What you want? What you want out here? Question mark. Uh, we got one, two. There you go. Yeah, I'll make it a one minute poll. So it's not super long. All right. Vote in the polls. If you want me to cover one or two, again, just vote the winner. Winner will, uh, will be whatever we choose. Pretty close actually. Wow. Okay. I'm a, I'm a hide it and I'm going to let you guys figure that out. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to clean up this one piece this one piece thing here. <laughs> Why not? Um, You'd like to see one or two. Oh, wait, you guys can't even see, right? This is one or two right here. Um, again, you guys can choose whichever one um, makes the most sense to you, which one you find the most interesting, right? Here, I'm going to put the, the chat away so you guys can see. Ah, two. Wow, very close. Very close uh, pick, actually. All right, so it looks like two is going to be the one we're going to be covering today, uh, which is going to be this girl sitting down. That's a fun one because we're not only tackling a dynamic... Uh, low shot view there. We're also tackling someone sitting down, which we will be covering on a later day of my boot camp, by the way. But um, we'll talk about it for today as well, too. Why not? Oh, yeah. Adding adding silhouette always uh, always helps make it more readable. That's nice. There you go. I'm just going to fill Nami in as well, too. Okay. Oh, thanks you. Thank you, Barbic. Yeah, for those of you guys who are coming in and wondering what we're doing today, um, so for those of you who are here, welcome in. Uh, let me do a proper intro, actually. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is K7. I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to all things related to character design, and I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Right now, I'm actually prepping to work on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible, so if you guys are interested in some free art education, you guys like anime or animation or you just like hanging out with my dog who is staring at me right now make sure to join in leave a follow and i hope you guys enjoy today's stream if you're watching from youtube like and subscribe there you go we had to always mention that one uh, but yeah that's a little bit about me for uh, those of you who are coming in here and wondering what we're doing today uh, i mostly teach art on twitch uh at least in terms of what i do on twitch outside of twitch i do other um, i do other things but yeah, that's my dog. Yeah, his name is Arrow. He's an Akita, and he mostly you will just catch him sleeping. That's <laughs> that's all he's that's all he does. You know what I'm gonna do? Oh, here's a cool little trick that you guys can do um, when it comes to when it comes to um, doing some foreshortening or whatever. There you go. A little bit of motion blur there just to make it look like this uh, baton is more further up in space. Nice, nice, easy peasy. Uh, I want to guess here, rise line is on one. Is uh, is it on the hand? Ah, great question. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that in a bit. Let's let's do that actually uh, right now. All right. So you guys are uh, you guys voted for this one. 
you guys are bold this is a tough one to do but i think it's going to be okay i think you guys will be able to handle it let's go do a little bit of trivia so the first question is i'm going to ask you guys where is the horizon line here where do you guys think the horizon line is i'll give you guys a few options so that way you're not like super lost uh is it a b c d or e now obviously um if it's it's i'm just giving you an approximation okay uh approximation out here where do you feel like it's gonna be um yeah we can even put i'll put f up here if you want to put f up there too um where is the horizon line gonna be um out here uh it's off the image very far away you do have the three-point perspective vanishing okay so kind of kind of so what's interesting here is i think what you're referring to is the vanishing point the vanishing point is very far away yes the horizon line itself is actually always visible on the image unless it's a very top down shot in which case you're not going to see it in this case i actually think the horizon line is is is, is visible um and i will answer okay so ah interesting so a lot of you guys are actually stating d hmm d is wrong <laughs> i'm sorry d d unfortunately is not the right answer um and the reason why it's not d is because d is actually where the ground plane is you can kind of see here this is the ground plane of this image um but the remember that the horizon line here the eye level is going to be where we're going to be seeing the character lined up with our eye view and everything above or below it is going to be um uh what's it called where it's either going to be above or below and again I, as i said earlier the horizon line may not always be on the image right i said most cases you'll find the horizon line on the image because if you imagine your horizon line as being the camera view that you're shooting right let's say you have a camera here whenever you take something that'll always have a dis an indiscriminate horizon line but remember there are cases like, for example, if you're doing a pan shot and animation and you're moving something down or whatever have you or moving something across, there are going to be cases where, yes, the horizon line is not going to be there or if you're doing a very skewed shot. Right. But the horizon line in itself, if you're referring it to it as the eye level, as long as you're looking at something, you could definitely determine a horizon line. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat if that made sense or doesn't make sense. Again, there's there's um, there's ways that you can interpret this. And so I'm trying to give it in terms of my context right here. As long as you see it, there will as long as you're looking at something, there's always a horizon line that you can determine from that. But again, there are cases where let's say you draw a scene like this, right? But you're only zoomed in on the character like this, right? Like let's say this, let's say you have a shot in animation and you're only focused on uh this shot right here right the character's face zoomed in like this this is going to be the shot right here then yeah the horizon line is going to be below it right but again if you look at the overall image you can see it there in this case right here i will actually say that the horizon line is on um is going to be on the image and i'll show you uh i'll show you why i think that is um firstly right here if you take a look at her face i would say her face is actually pretty leveled out in terms of perspective you can kind of uh if you kind of follow along here where the brows are like this brows eyes nose and mouth they're pretty lined up horizontally but as you get lower and lower you're going to start seeing more of the top plane of certain things like for example you're going to see the top plane of her knees there you'll see the top plane of her shoe there and a few other warp things out right so based off of that i would actually put the horizon line somewhere between a to b maybe even uh, we could even put it higher than a um, but I would say somewhere around A to B is where I would personally put it. But if you guys remember at the beginning of my stream, one of the things I told you guys is generally speaking, you can actually place your horizon line and vanishing points and all that stuff um, anywhere you want to in the image. And if you want to make it line up with the central focus of something that I actually think is much better. So here, notice how when we drew this shot right here, I actually put the horizon line right at the ankle of this foot because I feel like that's going to be a central zoomed in focus there of the character uh, pose, right? We want the characters kind of like feel like they're really stepping over here and kind of closing up on us 
Um, and so similarly here, I'm actually going to put the horizon line. I'm going to put it um, roughly at about eye level. I want to just put it like kind of like right here, maybe a little bit above, right? Um, but now take a look at this. Here's another cool thing too. So if you do have a reference like this, you can actually use the things that are in the shot right now to actually help you figure things out too. So if we take this bottle here, this can that we have, right? And we, we use it right here to line up here um, the perspective. Let me just try to do an arbitrary one right here. You see that? That's actually right about right here. So you can actually use, you can actually use some of these uh, perspective points here that are already in the scene to give you an idea of where things are. So there you go. If you want the exact, exact perspective, it's actually roughly at around where A is, close enough to A. Again, I personally am gonna change it, so I'm gonna say, you know what, I would rather have the horizon line be right at the eye, so that way the viewer is looking right at the eye here. Um, does that make sense? Let me know in the chat if that made any sense. Um, but again, I want to go back to that topic earlier where someone mentioned that the horizon line isn't necessarily going to be um, in, in the shot. I think that is true. There are going to be cases for that. But if you're ever, for example, going to be taking a picture of something, um, there will always be a, a horizon line there because the horizon line is just determined by wherever the camera eye view level is going to be at. Um, but let's put it right here. I like where that's going to be at. Uh, and then let's kind of place in a grid and all that stuff. All right. So here I'm just going to put it at a center mark. Um, we've, we've talked about this a few times where people have asked me questions about vanishing points and stuff. I always tell people that um, what's more important than uh, vanishing points is just understanding how the understanding how the horizon line works. Because I think if you can do that, personally, I feel like the stuff with vanishing points and all that become a little bit easier. Okay, let's go in. All right, cool. Um, so let me lower the opacity here and we'll lay out kind of the, the grid and stuff here. Every object has its own organic VP and perspective. Exactly. Yes. So, um, Everything also does have that, but um, generally speaking, those things will always converge on, on some horizon line. So we've talked about this. I'll show you guys. Uh, I'll show it to you guys uh, in a bit. Give me a second. Um, let's see here. So I'll show it right here. So we've actually talked about this on my previous day. On my previous day of um, of the boot camp, which is day twenty two, we actually talked a bit about drawing multiple characters in a scene in perspective. And one of the demos that I talked about here was actually about this idea of rotating objects in perspective, right? So let's say you took a square, so not even a cube or anything, but let's just say you took a square. And if you rotated the square in perspective, you actually end up finding that all of the lines that are created on this square here will create multiple different vanishing points across the horizon line that we have right here. So what this means is that for any given scene or shot, there is actually going to be an infinite number of uh, vanishing points that you can reference to, right? Um, and this is kind of what's referring to as an organic vanishing point, as some of you have mentioned in the chat. So when you're looking at anything right now and you kind of follow all the things that you're seeing, they're not all going to line up to one two point three point perspective. They're going to have their own natural organic vanishing points, um, but they should generally uh, roughly align to whatever your horizontal uh, horizontal line view is. Now, the other thing that I think is really important, and I'll kind of bring this back here, is something known as the degree, um, the degree of the object here that you're going to be seeing. So, I think this is more important than than understanding the vanishing points because. This basically says that the further away something gets from the horizon line, whether that's up or down, um, the more you're going to be seeing of the, the either the top or bottom plane there, right? So if you took like the cylinder or this leg here, uh, the further away it gets from the horizon line, the more curved this ankle is going to be and the more curved out this thigh is going to be, okay? If that didn't make any sense, that's okay because again, this is a kind of a more of a broader term here for... Uh, for drawing or, or broader kind of uh, topics here that we're going to be covering. So don't feel like if you don't understand it, that like, oh, it's like whatever. It's like this sucks. Um, again, I'm trying to keep it as I'm trying to keep it as uh, beginner friendly as possible. And so this is why I'm focusing primarily on some of the basic concepts here. Like 
uh, what's it called? Like, um, vanishing point or uh, not vanishing points, uh, horizon lines and stuff like that. Okay, but you can imagine right now, um, I'm 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 putting in here just kind of like a basic grid for this character. Where I'm, I'm gonna maybe lay out here some of the, uh, you know, some some lines here for the for the perspective we have here the ground plane and remember that the ground plane is actually different uh from the horizon line the ground plane is just where we're going to be seeing the uh the character standing on whatever it is so in this case it's going to be some floor it could be a chair or not necessarily it'll always be whatever the 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 ground is right and in this case the character sitting on that but um that's going to be different from the horizon line so All right, so you can imagine here, I did out a grid. Um, again, I didn't, you didn't have to like make it, you didn't have to kind of do what I was doing, but you know, um, I think for the example here, the demo, um, for the demo and stuff, you can kind of just lay it out here. Uh, let's see. feels like you're laying down a web to ensure our res uh, respect to, oh, re your respect the ratio wherever you draw, right? Ooh, um, that's a good call out. Yes. Yes and no. Um, I should have, yeah, we probably should have talked about that, but yeah, so you can use, um, perspective and try to lay out grids and stuff to, um, get a more of a, to, to kind of respect the proportions and stuff though. I wasn't really doing that. I was just kind of laying out a rough grid just to kind of visualize the plane a little bit. Um, but yeah, you could imagine that as you start putting in here, uh, more grids and stuff, you'll kind of see how you can use these things also as landmarks to be able to land certain areas and, uh, uh, make sure your proportions check out. We haven't done any of that yet, but I think actually, you know, that's not true. We kind of did it here when we drew out the Zoro and Nami one here. So yeah. Um, but cool. Let's, um, let's go ahead and continue now and draw out this, uh, this reference. But yeah, I think that's a good call out. You can technically use the grid to help you get, uh, to help you with establishing some structure and whatnot. Now, I do want to give some context to, to those of you guys who are watching as well. Um, I mostly, so I work, I work, uh, in animation and I'm, and I mostly draw characters. So I'm not, I don't work on environments and stuff. So, uh, most of the advice and the tips I'm giving you guys today are going to be in reference to, uh, in reference to how I think about placing characters and scenes in perspective. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of other topics here um, that you can, that you can kind of, uh, learn from, or when you learn when you're talking about perspective and stuff too. So for example, when you, when you get into kind of like environments and, and whatnot, or even in characters, there's a kind of, there's more concepts like depth of field, which we haven't really talked about yet. Uh, and maybe we'll talk about that actually, hmm, maybe next stream. Yeah. There's another topic that I haven't really touched upon yet, which is called depth of field. But that one's a little bit more complicated too. So <laughs> I'm trying not to make it super, super crazy for everyone today. Keeping it nice and simple. Okay, but yeah, let's kind of go in here. And usually whenever I'm drawing characters, again, the first thing that I care about is always landing here the points of contact, right? So I want to make sure that I have a good understanding, a good placement of where I want the characters to kind of land and sit on the, um, on the scene here right so here i want them to, i want their kind of like pelvis to be like right here um and so from there we're going to kind of go in and build off of that and you know what maybe let's put like that foot like right here so maybe there's a contact point right here of the, sh the heel of the shoe right and then maybe like right here going down further away we have here the contact of the other shoe now you don't have to do it this way i think you can start off with the pelvis and stuff but in general i think having a rough understanding of where you want your characters to be uh, interacting with the ground, I think is a pretty good, uh, pretty good strategy because that way it makes it so that you're not creating characters that are just floating around um, in space. Like how many, how many of you guys in the chat have ever tried to draw uh, you know, draw a character in perspective or in a scene, right? And the moment, like, let's say you drew this character and you put them in the scene, they just look like they're floating in the shot. They're not, they, they don't look like they're actually part of the environment. Put an F in the chat if you've ever done that before, where you're like, hmm, for some reason, it looks like my character is like I slapped a sticker on my drawing, 
right? If you've ever had that problem, oftentimes I think the issue comes down to having that kind of not having it lined up there with the perspective that you have. Um, and so I always say I like to work from the ground up and just kind of start building out here uh, more of the, the structure, right? Now, again, I want to remind you guys that you don't have to draw all the boxes and mannequins uh, when you're drawing these out. So like when we drew when we drew this version here of Nami, I mostly used a lot of gesture with you guys. So I wasn't like super focused or fixated on the on the grid. But, you know, I think when you're first starting out, it's completely fine to kind of use the grid and stuff. I try to eyeball a lot of these things, so I'm not actually kind of lining up here the perspective, but I'm trying to keep in mind here that the closer we get to that horizon line, um, the less open things become. And so using that as a point of reference will actually become uh, really helpful for us as we move forward. Um, but yeah. Oh, I missed a question earlier. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, by the way, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, I'm here to try to answer any questions that you guys might have. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I'll, I also tell you guys to take what I say with a grain of salt because sometimes I'll teach things out here and then later I'll, I'll learn it a little bit more differently or I'll learn it better. Um, so again, I wouldn't say I'm like a licensed professional. I'm not, I'm not you know, licensed to teach or anything. I'm just teaching you guys the things that I've learned and found that have helped me uh, both in my career, but also just things that I've learned throughout my time studying as well. So my knowledge will always change and grow. So yeah, I miss a dance break. So I usually do that during the ad break. So yeah, I, I saw it earlier. We'll hopefully if we don't forget, um, we'll knock that one out during the uh, during the ad break. Mm, let's see here. Thank you for the follow too. Uh, Ramen Thief, Anti-PX, uh, Dodgy Boy, and everyone else coming in here. All right, so let's go in and let me go kind of lock in here the, the, um, the foot now, right? So you can imagine here, we're going to be kind of placing in this foot. And I have here that point of contact again. So imagining kind of like this, uh, this foot's a little elevated here, right? This shoe. And then, you know, we're going to kind of piece in all these basic structures and using kind of these primitive shapes can again really be a great way to just start getting comfortable with drawing your characters in these perspective shots as opposed to going in and just jumping right away into all the organic forms uh, that we're seeing because sometimes when you when you jump into those things it can be tough it can be hard to to try to figure out and make sense of everything that's going on So I'm going to go ahead and tilt this one back a little bit. So we're seeing less of that plane. Uh, thank you for the D shrimp. Appreciate that. Also, thank you for all the follows today. Um, Sa Sabrina, uh, Lopsil, and everybody else coming in here. Uh, welcome in, guys, to the KSM crew. I'd love to know, for those of you who are following today, welcome in. How did you guys come across uh, my stream today? Was it from the front page? Was it from recommended? Was it from... Uh, my YouTube channel, was it from, I don't know, browsing, browsing on Twitch, a friend of a friend, a raid today, or perhaps, uh, what is a purplish thing over her right leg? I think that's just her tights. <laughs> I think that's just how her tights are. I don't know. Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't own tights like these, so can't say. You saw your recommended. You have a nice, chill voice to work along to. Oh, thank you, Sasa Brina. Appreciate that. Also, Zelos and Cozy Bees, too. Thank you for the follows. Cyborg Leg, yeah. Uh, we had the raid this week. Oh, really? Was that from... Uh, ah, it was from Young Nails, wasn't it? That's super dope. Appreciate that. Front page. Uh, I recognize you from the other from either YouTube or Insta. Oh, shoot. That's super dope. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, watching in today. Yeah, again, um, you know, this is... Kind of what I do out here on Twitch, a lot of educational stuff, but I've come to find that sometimes people just play my streams or watch my streams while they're working as well, too. You know, sometimes it's good to play a little bit of nerdy educational content while you're trying to get some work done because it's tough to get work done while you're watching a game stream. Like, let's be real. 
I've tried to I've tried to work while watching like like LCS or like League of Legends and stuff and it's like yo it's almost impossible I think to 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 be productive so like playing a you know playing like educational content like yeah it's not bad it's okay too many distractions though I will argue that sometimes we do get we can get a little distracting out here um on my stream so I'll do, I do my best to keep it entertaining but not too fun. We don't want to be too hype out here. We have we have a special days for that. We got like um birthday long 24 hour streams for that. You came from Young Nails too. Yeah, you know I was watching Young Nails' stream uh the other day. The 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 production on their stream is insane. I love it. I love the energy too, the the people that they bring on to chat and stuff. Uh great knowledge, great community. So shout out to those of you who are here from uh from Young Nails' stream. Um Ah, I see. Um, Creative Browse, nice. Let's see here. I actually saw your stream and it seemed quite interesting. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. So <laughs> when will you draw requests that remain after 24 hours after the boot camp finishes? Um, so all the drawing requests that came in, uh, those anything after the 400 mark was basically uh, not part of the additional request. So I covered as many as I could from the ones that came in. And then after that, that was yeah, that was mostly it. But I do I do appreciate all the all the support out there. But yeah, hopefully that's okay with you guys. There was just so many that came in afterwards that I was like not expecting, and I didn't have time uh, to, to to tackle all of them. So, but maybe I will. I think I still have to. It's also difficult too because at the towards the end of it, I just couldn't track all the all the messages. You could imagine it was like across multiple hours. So I couldn't like list everything out. Um, let's see here. But yeah, so as you guys can see, we're kind of laying out now all of the kind of components here. And I'm keeping it nice and simple as a mannequin because if you can do this, again, you can start adding in all the organic shapes. But you don't have to do it like this, right? You can you can go jump in and do all the um all the organic stuff and whatnot. What about the list I have? Um, I did those. I should have done all of them. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I knocked them all out and stuff. Of the ones that I got and listed out, those were all done on stream. Um, okay. Uh, but yeah, hey, thanks for the follows. Uh, Dan's Math and Draco Skull. But all right, let's go in and um, we're going to kind of knock out here all of these components. So again, just keeping it nice and simple. This is kind of a great way to practice and train yourself too to get comfortable with some of the organic shapes and forms. But you can kind of see we're, we're locking it out here. Uh, we got here this arm that we're going to just put across, right? And for those of you who are wondering how to maybe like how I'm able to kind of lock in these proportions and stuff. I would actually recommend you check out, let me see what day that was. I believe it was day 21 of my boot camp where I actually go over the general proportions of the human body. Um, these proportions, some of them you can use for different styles of animation if you're trying to do more of a cartoony style or more of a realistic style. Um, but some of the more specific proportions, those are just for the general structure of the human body. Um, but they are utilized in oftentimes more realistic style shows like Legend of Korra, Invincible, uh, Young Justice, let me think of a few other ones, um, Castlevania, like those type of shows will utilize that like eight head structure. So it's not a bad proportional technique to learn, though it's not the only thing that you should be, you know, learning and stuff. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I don't remember you're drawing Roxy Magurda. Mm, you know... I think that came in after, didn't it? I don't know. I'll double check. But yeah, again, if I didn't, I apologize. There were so many that came in after the 400 mark. And so from there, it was just, uh, yeah. You know, I kind of see what you're saying. Yeah, maybe I maybe I did miss that one. Um, and hey, Snow, welcome back in. Um, the math job, former math teacher. I do math art and post it. Oh, that's super cool. Um, but yeah, we don't, we don't take any links out here on my streams, guys. So just keep that in mind. You can't post uh, links out here. Um, yeah, that's super cool. Welcome in.
Okay, so she's, I don't know what she's, she's like holding like a pepper, like not a pepper, a, a spray can here. Uh, I'm not going to like necessarily do that, but I'll just put her hand here like this. We'll just kind of block it out. Uh, you know, just like a simple gesture there for the hand. And then we'll, we'll start working on the general structure of the face. And then I think we'll be good here to actually just draw out another character here. Or, um, if you guys want, we'll jump into that other pose here that we had earlier, but maybe we'll draw a character for fun. Um, you can't draw perspective for the life of you. <laughs> yeah. So this is again, um, this is why we're covering some of that perspective today to kind of showcase to you guys how to start approaching some of these things and get a little bit more comfortable with the, um, get a little bit more comfortable with, with perspective overall, because I do think perspective is actually a really core and great fundamental to learn. I think it's more important to learn, to learn and know perspective um, than it is to learn anatomy. Personally, personally, I think so. Um, though I do love my anatomy. You guys have watched my streams. You know how much I love talking about anatomy and stuff. And we can go talk about anatomy for days. Uh, but I personally think that knowing the perspective along with gesture and general shapes, whew, that alone will take you so far in your art career. 100%. But all right, there you go. We got here this uh, this general kind of mannequin pose. Um, it's a little, again, it's it's kind of very simplified. It's a little stiff, but that's okay. That's the whole point. We're trying to go for something stiffer here. Um, but now let's go in here and let's actually let's actually go in and maybe start drawing a character um, on top of all this. Okay, so to kind of spice it up a little bit here. Um, do vanishing points help frame the pose? Mm, kind of, yeah. I think vanishing points should be used more as a guideline than it should be, um, than it should be used as a specific kind of thing that you have to, you have to use, uh, that you have to follow all the lines across and stuff. I don't know if that made any sense, but, um, it can, it can help frame the pose. It can help frame, um, the shot. Vanishing points are generally good and, and I encourage using it. All right, so let's go do another one here. Okay, we're gonna do another uh, drawing for this one. Let me. And let's see if you can guess this character here. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, let me know what mic you get. I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big audio nerd. I love, I love, uh, stream gear and all that stuff. So let me know what you, what you're picking out. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead now and let's start tackling, uh, let's start tackling this pose and let's see if you guys can guess the character that I'm drawing for this one. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe we'll try. We'll try to see if we'll see if I can make, if I can make it look right. Okay. Uh, can you answer me, please? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, uh, let me see here. Could you work with a tablet that's not touchscreen? Um, yeah, I mean, I can work with that, but I don't choose to, if that makes any sense. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, would you record your commission drawings if you requested to? Um, if requested to, and where can I ask for a commission? Oh, um, so I don't normally take commissions anymore, uh, mostly because I'm just so busy with work and stuff. But if you guys are thinking about, uh, commissions and you're interested in commissioning, I would say just reach out to me via discord, just DM me and stuff. And then, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see from there. But yeah, I would say, um, I don't do as much commissions as I used to because I just, again, I mostly just do freelance work now or studio work. So haven't really had much time, but feel free to reach out. Sometimes I'll pick up a project or two. If I, if I find that this like it's interesting or something, you know, uh, but let's see here. We're going to kind of draw out this character and I will try my best to see if I can make this character line up with my style and stuff. 
Can you ask for a not safe for work commission? Uh, you can, you can ask again. If I, if I don't pick it up, you know, that's just, that's just on me. I'm just not going to pick it up. Um, struggling with vanishing points. I hope after watching your videos, I hope you understand. Yeah. Um, again, it might be, I would say this is not supposed to be like the, uh, the definitive only way to draw perspective kind of thing. I would, I would definitely say like, you know, find, find, um, the techniques and things that work for you, find the methods that work for you as well. Um, because I personally feel like there's so many different ways to approach drawing. One of which is, you know, the way that I approach it, which is a very kind of, um, a very systematic way where, uh, where I break things down and I talk about all the, uh, proportions and all of that stuff, but this is not necessarily the only way to approach, uh, drawing for sure. And hey, thank you for the follows too, Captain and everybody else coming in here. Let's see if I can get an interesting kind of pose here or not an interesting pose, an interesting, uh, character design. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, also, Jewfoot, hey, welcome back in. Jewfoot, Jewfoot. Yeah, your name sounds super familiar. I know you've been here before. I'm trying to remember if I've seen you in other streams as well. Maybe? I think so, right? I feel like I must have. Sanji? I'm not going to say... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not going to tell you guys who I'm trying to draw just because I know that if I, if I tell you guys, you're going to be like, oh, you forgot this detail. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Okay. We're going to find out. We're going to, y'all will find out if it is, it, 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 it may, it, it may or may not be Sanji possibly. Um, got his YouTube hacked by crypto scammers. Yeesh. That's rough. Watch out for those hacks, guys. Those hackers out here. As someone who used to be a software engineer, um, those things are dangerous. Definitely want to watch out for, um, you definitely want to watch out for those. You work with PCAT. Ah, yes. Yes. I remember now. Yeah. I, I catch you on PCAT streams on occasion. Super dope. Yeah. Welcome into the KSM crew. Welcome back in, I should say. Um, hopefully you're, hopefully you're doing well today. How have you been? Trust, trust someone who used to be a hacker. I didn't wait. Did I say I was a hacker? No, no, no. I said as someone who used to be a software engineer. Okay. Um, it is true that I, I did take classes on cybersecurity when I was in college and stuff. So I do know how to hack people like, you know, using a cross-site scripting and all of those bells and whistles, but we learn it for the greater good. Okay. We learn it for the greater good and uh, to, to, to make sure that people, you know, we, we know how to fight those things. Not because we're, we know how to hack people. Any, yeah, white hat hacker. There you go. See, you guys know. Um, any tips for spotting or avoiding hacker stuff? Um, I personally just don't click, don't click any link that you don't know, you don't know who it's from. And even if you know who it's from, still don't click those links. If you, if you're like, Hmm, this person wouldn't send me something like this, probably because they, uh, they aren't, I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, um, but yeah. So for those of you guys who again, coming in here today, uh, today's stream is focused primarily on going over. Uh, I mostly want to go over with you guys the, uh, how to kind of tackle drawing characters in perspective, but in particular, kind of the more dynamic 
uh, dynamic perspective and stuff where you're either having a top down view or a, or you're sorry, not, not top down view, either having a low angle shot or a high angle shot. Um, and so here we're kind of going over some of those examples. And then if we have time, which I don't know if we will, um, we might do one more example out here. Now, something I want to do is um, the mannequin here that we used is a little bit on the smaller side. So I'm going to try to change up some of the proportions here for Sanji. And I said Sanji, but um, uh, for this character that I'm drawing right now, just for fun. But yeah, welcome in. Welcome in everyone who's coming in. Um, Kasem made me kind of wish I took cybersecurity class. Yeah, play safe, guys. You know, the internet is a fun but also potentially uh, dangerous place. So you got to watch out sometimes. He looks like Ed. <laughs> okay, look, here's the, here's the braids and all that stuff. Okay. But again, um, this is more like... Uh, this is more of my uh, my style, and we're kind of roughing it out too, so we'll see. I can see it looking like Ed, though. I think we have to get the we have to get his build. We got to get his build here. So I'll probably have to warp it out just a tad bit to match the proportions a bit more. Uh, did you make it to class on time? Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, I, I always I always let you guys know that my streams, um, you know, there's no like right or wrong time to come in. Um, so you can definitely tune in. Um, you can definitely tune in at any time that you come in. Though, if you do want to watch the beginning and everything all, all from the, you know, from the beginning of my streams, um, I would say to check out... Check out my YouTube channel because on my YouTube channel, that is where I actually kind of go over. Um, that's where I go over all the 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 stuff from the beginning, and you can watch that at two times speed or whatever have you. Um, but yeah. Okay, so let me I'm gonna speed up on this one and then I think we'll be good to go uh, we'll, we'll hopefully knock out one more pose with you guys and for that one. I'll just I'll just talk more about um, I'll just talk more about the the general kind of um, uh, Proportions and stuff for that pose and then from there we'll kind of move on to to uh, I think we'll be we'll be done with that one with all the poses um, as someone who works in Procreate, how do you merge flattened layers with effects so that they don't convert back to a normal layer? Um, you clip mask. I'm pretty sure you clip mask, but there are some things that just won't that won't uh, won't play well. So just keep that in mind. Um, unfortunately, Procreate has sometimes very limited functionality, and so yeah, you can you can potentially just have something that just doesn't merge well. But yeah, that's what I'd say. Um, on the Discord channel, so where are the sheets? So if you uh, do, 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 they're under art resources. So go check out art, uh, art resources, and that's where you're going to find uh, those sheets that you can grab and stuff. What kind of shoes does Sanji have? Just black boots? I just realized they don't really add a lot of detail to the shoes of these characters. Um, so I'm going to have to just make up some shoes, um, some shoe design for Sanji real quick. I don't know. whatever so some rough sketch there for a shoe um we're trying to see if it's we, if we can make it to sanji 
I'm just trying to draw a bunch of One Piece characters. Again, again, I'm telling you guys, you know, take these with a grain of salt because I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't draw One Piece characters professionally. So I'm just kind of whipping up here some rough sketches for these guys. Um, but I wanted to show you guys just kind of how to lay down some of these characters and stuff. Um, in a perspective grid, right? Because if you can kind of do this with the basic shapes and stuff, you can really turn these around and actually add, um, you can kind of add in all the, all the stuff there, right? You can add in all the, the character, uh, details and stuff. But I actually think personally, the, the first step really is going to be, uh, going in and just actually adding in the, adding in all of those components that we talked about with the, with the basic shapes. Um, and thank you for the sub, tripping, uh, tripping chinchilla, six months. Sheesh. Okay, cool. So I think with that, we've got here a general kind of, uh, just a general kind of posture there. I think what I would do, because I think, again, a big part of this is the, the model that we use she's actually pretty small and so we would probably want to if if i were to draw this one out i'd probably lengthen out a lot of the limbs a little bit more um so that way we can get more of a lengthy kind of pose there from sanji or a character like sanji who i think is a little bit more on the leaner side um of, in terms of build and stuff um but anyways let's kind of go in here and throw on a quick little uh, quick little eye. Okay, there you go. So rough, rough, um, kind of a rough kind of uh, pose there. And then maybe we'll just have him like, I don't know, holding a cigarette piece right there kind of thing. Cool. All right. So we've got here two poses that we've knocked out. Uh, just kind of some simple kind of gestural, uh, not gestural, uh, simple, uh, bu -bu -bum, let's group this one here, simple perspective stuff. But I wanted to do one more with you guys that I feel like uh, will be more of an example to show you how you don't necessarily need to line everything up exactly on this grid. You can actually kind of be a little bit flexible with it uh, when it comes to drawing and stuff. So I'm going to put one of these away so that way we have more space. And let's bring in this final reference that we got right here. And I think this one will be good to just kind of tackle really quick, kind of a quick speed run on this one. All right. So this is going to be this pose. This will be probably the last one that we're going to tackle out here today. A pretty tough pose, not going to lie. We've got here this kind of interesting shot. Now, again, what I want to show you guys is you don't necessarily need to line everything up on a horizon line, nor do you have to actually, um, what's it called? Have your, have everything be connected to some sort of vanishing point. In this case right here, what I want to do is I'm actually going to say, you know what? I want the horizon line to be right here because I want the focus to be right on his hands, kind of like that, that center point there where his hands are. And then everything else kind of falls from there. And then here you can actually take, for example, like his torso. And let's just say we're going to kind of bring his torso in this way. And you can use the general structure here of the, of the anatomy of the, of the character or whatever have you, and be able to then establish where you also want those horizon lines to be. So in this case, it's more about, I think, being flexible and just kind of leveraging some of the kind of the overall structure of your character to be able to go in and uh, draw whatever perspective you want. So I think the first two examples, we went over a grid and all that stuff. Uh, here, we're not going to be using as much of a grid or uh, I will still use a grid, but I'm going to be using more of kind of like a general, I want to say like, for example, I want the character to be here. I want the ground plane to be here. And so this will be more of me working out a general ground plane um, as opposed to going in and actually going and, uh, you know, drawing out a perspective and stuff. So you can imagine if this was a grid that we had going this way, right? And we had this character here. 
Uh, love the stream. I was wondering what this resolution was. I stream. Um, oh, you mean my 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 Procreate resolution? So this is going to be in 4K resolution. Uh, yeah, I usually work in 4K resolution. So this is going to be the grid that we have. Um, but here I'm going to go in. I'm just going to kind of start laying out some general structures, right? So we're going to be going kind of going over here the uh, the box there of the torso, doing all of that. Uh, here I'm going to kind of lay in some lines as they kind of recede down and in this case right here because we're actually looking down at something um, You can use something here like three-point perspective and that's going to be uh, What we kind of talked about or we didn't talk about this one earlier But basically three-point perspective the idea here is that you have a vertical axis right here kind of at the center line where you can actually uh, Bring things down like so now, even things like three-point perspective and the vertical axis, you can also rotate things as well, and that'll also alter uh, the positioning there of your vanishing points. But again, I try to use more of like a loose interpretation here as we go in now, and we're going to start knocking out some of these uh, proportions for this character. So here we're going to go in, kind of bring this down, bring it down on the rib cage, right? Bring down for the pelvis like so. Um, and as you start going in here, uh, you know, kind of further away, you're going to be seeing less and less of um, this reference. And so overlapping is going to actually play a pretty big role uh, when, when we're tackling stuff like this, uh, these more kind of complicated uh, perspectives and stuff. I think that is actually going to be a big part of... Uh, being able to draw good for shortening is just adding in some nice overlaps all right uh, but yeah let me know if so far guys if, if i'm going too fast or if this is okay um, or if you want me to go and talk about like a uh, focus on a particular topic that maybe you guys are confused about let me know in the chat otherwise uh, i'll keep going at this pace i think this is uh this might be okay here yeah let me know let me know if this is good if you guys are like yo okay sim this is a little too difficult because that's also good for me too. Because I, I, you know, I'm trying. I try to pick topics that I feel like you guys would also uh, find helpful. But if it's like maybe too complicated, then we might, I might pick some easier topics for the future uh, days of the boot camp. Because I think the other days that I have covered um, with you guys are going to be, uh, let me think. We have drawing different poses. So we have here like drawing sitting poses, drawing some action poses, stuff like that. Uh, and then we have, uh, let me think what else we have listed out. We have drawing clothes as well. So that's going to be another one, another topic we're going to be covering. And then after that, we're going to be finishing it with the drawing different builds and stuff. Okay. But yeah, so as you can see, uh, right here, I'm laying out that, again, a, a rough grid of where I wanted that ground plane to be. And then from that rough ground plane, I'm just using here, building up some of the forms and structures. But you don't have to feel like you're, you know, lining everything up exactly. If anything, I actually think this is a more uh, a flexible way to be able to draw out your, your character designs. So here, we got here the head, like so. And then we've got maybe like an arm going over here. And um, I think we'll be good. Oh, shoot. I do un I do run ads every stream, guys. Or, or once uh, I do run ads every hour out here. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around uh, for the ad break. And yeah, if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a Prime sub. But either way, thank you for your support. And I hope to see you guys after the ad break. If you do get an ad break. Oh yeah, we got a dance party. Let's go do... <laughs> Alright, let's go do a quick dance party break. If you guys are new here, all you gotta do right now... Pause the music. All you gotta do right now is spam some emotes in the chat. So once per stream, I believe, you can redeem a dance party break. So everybody just spam emotes in the chat. We're gonna do a quick little break out here on stream. Uh, let's get this one going. Spam some emotes. And let me see if it still works. I hope it still works. Uh, three. Here we go. Three. Two. Uh, one. All right, guys. Hit me with the, uh, hit me with the dance party break. Whoa! Hey, 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 
Hey. <laughs> Why are there no emotes here? Hey. Hey. Shout out to One Piece. There you go. <laughs> it always cuts out and like it's just awkwardly here. Uh, but there you go. That's a little dance party break for those of you who are uh, redeemed it earlier. We got that one going in, coming in hot. Thanks for dropping those emotes, guys. Sheesh. One Piece dance party break. But yeah, well, I'm a big fan of One Piece. If you <laughs> if you can't tell by now. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the arms. Um, I know someone earlier said the right arm is tricky. You mean this one right here? Or the one that's raised up this way. Again, um, I, I would encourage you guys, for those of you who are struggling with uh, this pose and stuff, I really do encourage you guys to practice drawing these out as just basic shapes. Because if you can knock out these basic shapes, I'll show you guys kind of how the gestural form and stuff looks like on top of all this. The one closest to us. I see. You mean this one up here. So we mean this one. Um, but yeah. Oh, also, let me do a quick little intro of myself. So for those of you guys who are coming in here for the first time, welcome into the KSM crew. Uh, my name is KSM, and I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm actually prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art, Art education you guys like anime or animation or you just like hanging out with my dog who is facing away from us right now he doesn't he doesn't want to be seen uh do leave a follow out here on twitch and also if you're watching from youtube make sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff um but thank you for the kind words i'm an a4 wow appreciate that um do you know any artists that do backgrounds oh yeah 100 percent. plenty of plenty of dope artists um that i know who who, who do backgrounds and stuff Oh, wow. Thanks for all the follows, guys. Appreciate it. But yeah, so for those of you who are uh, coming in here and following my stream and stuff, how did you guys uh, come across my channel today? It's funny how my dog is never on his bed. And is it funny? Is it funny? Or am I being bullied? <laughs> am I being bullied by my dog for him never being on his bed? No, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's pretty funny. My dog really out here. You find me in the art category. Ah, super cool. Nice. Okay, so again, this is going to be just some of the basic shapes that we're working on here. You can even simplify the, the hand as well as kind of like this, you know, again, there's a top plane here that we're not really going to be seeing. So there's a boxy plane right there for the hand. Uh, and then as you kind of work your way down, you kind of have those cylindrical forms that you have right here. Um, remember that if you were just to imagine this was as a horizon line right there, you can kind of bring about the, the roundness here, the forms. Um, of the arm and all of that stuff and obviously there's going to be some muscle that's going on here for example the deltoids and stuff like that so those things will alter the shape and form of the mannequin you're drawing but for the most part in terms of just simplifying the basic shapes uh this is kind of what i like to usually do here um, when it comes to just drawing out some of these basic structures right now, if we did want to go in here, I'll show you guys really quick. Um, if we're going to go in here and actually start laying out some of the anatomy and the forms here, this is where you can start actually adding in some of the curvature on top and making it look and feel just a little bit more organic than maybe what we have right now um, in this mannequin. So let me actually take this here and I'm going to put away this reference now. Um, so let's kind of talk a bit about kind of laying out here uh, this character that we have and kind of laying out some of the perspective again the hands are going to be a little funky but we'll we'll kind of talk a bit about how to overlay some of those forms as well and maybe we'll actually start off with the hand maybe that could be a fun thing to do or let's let's kind of build it up from here so you could imagine here if we have this uh, arm now 
Um, part of the reason why I think this form is difficult is because one, it's a hard pose in general. No matter the the perspective that you're drawing this pose in, it's going to be a hard pose um, because you're doing an arm raised, right? And so this arm raise is going to add some interesting kind of shapes there. Um, you're going to be raising here, for example, the the clavicle, right? Uh, then you're also going to be raising the pectoral muscles here. So that alone is already kind of interesting, right? But as you start building up the forms, you can hopefully start also establishing some overlap here that'll help create a, a bit more of an illusion there of foreshortening. So here, we're going to add in maybe those trap muscles right there, getting in and kind of wedging into the, the, the deltoid right there. Um, here, those deltoids are going to kind of wrap in and we're going to have like, let's say I'm just going to I'm just going to name some of the anatomy. But again, you don't have to worry too much about um, the anatomical forms here. Uh, but for example, right here, you're going to have those biceps, right? So uh, these forms are going to tuck into the arm like so. And then here you'll have that coracobrachialis going in here. So overall, understanding kind of these overlaps. So here, this bicep overlapping that deltoid or that shoulder muscle, I think will come in really handy. Uh, and then here on the outer side, we're going to have also the, um, we're going to have here kind of the shape there now of the tricep. And this tricep muscle is actually going to be pretty, pretty prominent and pretty stretched out because he's raising his arms there. So you can kind of imagine here how to, kind of how you can start using these components to start building overlap because now, um, in front of these muscles is actually going to be one, the medial epicondyle, which is also known as just the inner portion there of that elbow, right? So we're going to kind of use that there to overlap the form. Um, here, the bicep is going to kind of tuck in there. Then on this outer side right here, you're going to have the ridge muscles kind of wrapping in this way. Uh, and then maybe that it, that in itself is also going to create some overlap too. So the process that we're doing right here um, the process that we're doing right here, you'll actually see is going to be the similar process that we did when I showed you guys how to tackle drawing, for example, this foot um, that's going to be foreshortened in front of us or going towards us, right? It's going to be utilizing overlapping forms and gestures there to be able to subtly denote a bit of foreshortening without having to actually go in and draw every single cylindrical form. Um, don't forget the lats. Yeah, so the lats are down below. But yes, the lats would be right here. Um, they wrap around on the inner side of the arm, right behind this uh, uh, tricep right there. But they actually kind of go like this. But we're mostly focused right now on the arm. So I'm gonna we're gonna go back to that one later. But yes, the the lats are gonna be there. Um, you can kind of imagine how they tuck back there like that. All right. Uh, well, thanks for the follows. Uh, Zime, uh, Kanato, Enemy Lemon, uh, Ruby, Ruby, and everybody else coming in here. Uh, our category recommended tab super dope nice you see the akita still refuses the bed i know my dog my dog never learns guys i don't think he'll ever be on his bed here i'll even throw a treat watch i'll throw a treat for him and i don't i still don't think he'll go in the bed let's see i lured a trap in there will dog go on bed what do you guys think predictions in the chat Wow, look, he doesn't even care. He just ignores it. <laughs> he doesn't need to, didn't even move a muscle. Didn't even flex. I, I think he saw me throw it too. Um, are the pecs and the deltoids connected? No. Are they do they do they touch each other? Yes. So the deltoids, so the deltoids and the pectoral muscles are actually, interestingly enough. Uh, both connected to the same bone here of the clavicle, right? So keep that in mind um, right here. The clavicle right here is going to be this section. You'll have the pectorals. Uh, I'll, I'll draw it really quick. Um, so the pectorals are going to be right here, uh, like so. They're going to connect here to the rib cage, uh, the fifth rib down below here, the sternum down below here. Uh, and then they're actually going to go in and tuck actually into the arm right here. Um, but you're going to have most of that volume kind of going in here. The deltoids are going to also connect here to the clavicle, but they're also going to connect to the um, acromion process right here, which is kind of tucked in there. And they're also going to connect to the back side of the scapula. Um, so they're not, they don't necessarily connect to each other. They're just two separate sets of muscle, um, if that makes any sense. But they happen to be right next to each other. So 
you'll oftentimes see um, sometimes those two things are grouped together when they do get drawn out uh, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, the last ashy tuck into the armpit right in front of the tricep. Yeah. Did I say behind the tricep? Sorry. I meant to say, yeah, I meant to, uh, I meant to say in front of the tricep, but they tuck into the front side of the humerus there. And it's not just the lat muscle. It's actually the lats and right here, the teres major muscle. Um, but again, um, we're not talking about the, we're not talking about the back and stuff yet. We're going to be focusing primarily, um, on the, on the arm right now and kind of laying out the foreshortening here on the arm. But yes, um, the lat muscle and the teres major on the shoulder side there are actually two interesting muscles because they basically originate on the back side, but they wrap around and twist and connect into the upper portion here of the humerus bone. And that right there actually helps create this armpit pocket, um, right here. So this little armpit pocket here. And then the lower portion of all that is actually going to be the serratus muscles, which originate also from the backside. Um, they're going to, they're going to connect to the scapula and, uh, those also wrap around too. But yeah, yeah, my bad. If I, if I had said they went behind the tricep, yeah, I meant to say they're in front of the tricep. But yeah, so here going back to this arm um, and this hand and stuff, you can kind of see here how, again, just by adding in subtle overlaps to the forms, like adding in just a little bit of overlap here for the hand, um, having it go over the um, go over the wrist and stuff like that. Um, it's actually kind of all these little subtle things here that you can utilize to then create some of that structure and some of that overlap of the forms here uh, that make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on, right? So that's kind of what I would recommend for those of you who are like struggling with this particular hand pose. I think this is a, a hard pose in general. Um, if you do struggle with these things, you know, I always encourage you guys to lay in some cross contours. You know, don't be afraid to lay in some of those contours in there as you kind of start wrapping out closer and closer here to the form. Um, and then you can do the same thing across all of this in this pose and stuff, right? What is today's stream about? So today is about drawing dynamic poses, uh, drawing characters in kind of these either low angle poses or high angle poses. That is what today's stream is primarily focused on. Uh, but yeah, welcome in. Welcome back in. Uh, Ollie Rex. Um, so now we're going to go in and kind of tuck all of this here. I'm going to kind of lay out some of the muscles here on this side. Again, you don't have to do all of this, but I think it's fun to kind of show you guys how to take this mannequin structure that we have here, these uh, more kind of boxy forms, and how to actually kind of make them look and feel a little bit more organic, if that makes any sense. Uh, but yeah, how are you guys feeling today? Let me know in the chat if um, if you guys found today's stream helpful or if you were kind of like, yeah, you know, it's a little bit more advanced, but maybe still interesting to watch. I genuinely would love to know um, how you guys feel about today's today's topic. I think this might be the first time that I actually went over um, that I gone over this topic with you guys on stream. So I'm curious to see how you guys felt about it. If you guys are like, man, this is interesting, not as interesting, or maybe too difficult, maybe as a beginner, you're kind of like, yeah, this is not really where I'm at. Please let me know in the chat. I'm always trying to, um, again, uh, figure out which topics I think work, work the best out here on, on, on my streams for the, for my audience and stuff. Uh, been really helpful. Wish I could draw with you, but you're working around. Interesting. It's difficult because you're a beginner. You learned a lot. This is pretty motivating. Okay. Definitely really fun to follow along with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, my biggest concern was like, okay, this is a, this is definitely a much more, it's a bit of a jump, right? From what we covered last stream. Cause last stream I gave you guys the, basically the basics of perspective where I was like, okay, this is how you draw characters in perspective. Nice and easy. We're chilling, not too hard. Right. And then Today it was like, okay, well, remember how I told you guys about drawing characters in perspective? Well, today we're going <laughs> to, 
<laughs> we're going to be drawing this. We're going to be drawing characters in perspective, but we're going to make the perspective hard. And we haven't even really gone over talking about drawing characters in perspective where they're doing difficult poses. I think that's going to be the next progression of all this is going to be uh, going in and actually making these characters do difficult, crazy poses. Um, let's see. This is a good ride on my level and good to uh, better understand a different perspective on it. Yeah, that's great to hear. Nice. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it again. Uh, a lot of what I teach out here is is just stuff that's from my general perspective and from my general uh, take on how I draw things. But as I always say, you know, there's there's so many different ways to approach drawing these things. So if you don't necessarily like or agree with the way that I teach it, that's completely fine. I think that's the that's the beauty of art, right? <laughs> the beauty of art is being able to um, interpret things in however way makes sense to you. And as long as other people can understand your interpretation, I think that's all that matters, really. Um, there are a million places to cover the basics. Okay, that's good to hear. I appreciate that, Lost Toast. How would you draw leading lines on a one uh, for a longer focal length? For a longer... Okay, so hold on. By longer focal length, do you mean um, like telescopic? One point perspective telescopic? Or are you referring to longer focal length as in having like a wider um, a wider range? More compressed perspective? Um, I I think the, 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 the thing about that, and again, uh, this is me going back to what I was mentioning about perspective and stuff, is I personally don't think of, of things as an illustration as being only one point perspective or only being a two point perspective. Because I think realistically, in, in any scene that you draw, there will actually be an infinite number of vanishing points. And so if you want to draw something like for... I'll do it really quick. Um, let's say you have here a perspective grid, right? And you have here a box in perspective. Now, I'll draw a box really quick. And let's just say you have a nice, a nice pretty far out there, uh, almost orthographic view, right? Of, uh, of a box. So imagine we have this box here. Now this box right here, when you take it like this and kind of draw it out this way, this box for the most part is going to be, you know, you can see all the planes and all that stuff, right? All the, maybe it goes further this way like that. Um, so this is kind of like your standard box, your standard cube example. Now, as you start to um, use a wider lens, which will kind of warp some of the things out, what will actually end up happening is that same box that you have now. Um, let's just say I'll do it in a different color. The same box now will actually have, let's say we'll bring it like right here, right? Um, the same box will start to warp out a little bit more here, like this. Maybe warp right this way, like that. Um, and then this is me... Again, this is more of like a, a quick approximation demo, so apologies if this is not like this exact box here, because I, I, it's much better to just to see it in 3D and stuff, but like, you can kind of imagine here the same box now. Notice how it starts to warp out, right? So the closer your um, perspective points become, um, and your kind of range there, the, the more kind of warped out this box will be. So depending on the lens you're using, and I don't want to, I don't want to like throw these crazy terms for people because I feel like pe once you hear lenses, you get confused. Um, but just know here that um, there's this thing here called depth of field, which will basically alter how you're going to be viewing an object. And a lot of that is determined by how far or how close these vanishing points are in relation to each other. So you have something like this box versus this box, which is roughly the same box, just utilizing different vanishing, uh, utilizing different depths of field. Now, when it comes to doing something like that for one point perspective, I actually think it's going to be the same process. Um, one point perspective, again, is just one aspect of viewing that box. You can rotate that box and that same box in one point perspective now becomes a box in two point perspective. So instead, that's kind of how I would think about it is I would focus more on the overall depth of field that you can utilize um, by establishing multiple vanishing points and stuff like that and being able to visualize that grid. Um, yeah, I don't know if that made any sense. Oh, sorry if that was a, <laughs> a hand wavy answer. It's a tough question to ask because it's one uh, one I have to explain again that like one point perspective is just one way to view it. 
Um, if you take that same, again, if you take the same drawing in one point perspective and just rotate it slightly, it becomes a two point perspective. And thus, then you can utilize that. Mm, great questions. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for all the follows again today, guys. Really dope out here. Um, but yeah, I would say this is going to be the, the main topic for today. Um, for, for my YouTubers, out, my YouTube people watching, make sure to like, and subscribe and all of that stuff out here. Whew, what a tough stream, man. Tough one to cover out here today. I, I was, I was not sure if I should even cover this one. Let's see here. You're a photographer. So you often wonder how I'd be able to draw. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I know I, I can tell you're a photographer because you're talking about it in terms of lenses. And so I was like, I didn't want to throw those terms out for people because I know that that can be confusing, especially for those who don't do photography. Um, you're kind of like, huh? Like I, I know, I know a few things about lenses because I'm a streamer. And so I have like a bunch of DSLR cameras where I utilize different types of lenses to get different effects. Uh, but interestingly enough, yeah, you can still apply a lot of those things also to, uh, to art. Uh, you want a course for coloring and especially shading. Hmm. I don't know if we'll get to, we might do a day for coloring for sure. And shading as well too. Always inspiring. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, these were the, th these were the three drawings that we got out here. So we had this dynamic one here. Let me kind of group these up. Um, so we had this pose here, kind of like a super, it's almost like a superhero pose. I feel like if you think about it, um, yeah, very, I would say very superhero pose. I think it's a great pose. And then we had this one Sanji pose here, uh, more of a dramatic kind of shot here for this one. Um, kind of like that. So overall, a lot of three, uh, three different kind of perspectives there to kind of knock out, try out there, uh, for those of you guys who are here.